three, we are live here with Antidote of a Houndsman, Chris Watson, Benny yes, Griffin should be joining us later. And then we have a couple guests, kind of a different deal tonight, huh, Chris? Very different, but a lot of history. Anybody, it, any of you history buffs, these are people that got pictures from 1900s, early 1900s of family. You know, it's very disappointing these days that a lot of these, everybody's pictures, you lose your phone, your iCloud, whatever, you lost everything. Kind of like if your house used to go up in a flame before, huh? Lose all your photo albums. Nobody yeah. has it. Nobody has photo albums no more. No, it's all online. I mean, it we could lose online, it. Online, on mm. your phone. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. I know. She, kind of crazy. It's Tom Taylor, Tina Sherman, and Tina sent me a ton of pictures. Did you go? You went through all those, didn't you? I, all, I didn't have time to look at them. All I did was set them up where I can share them uh, live. So we'll yep. be sharing a ton of pictures, and they'll be coming on. Did you tell them what time? I told them it, it'd be 7 their time, so 6 your time. Okay, cool. So, There's yep. Mr. Johnny, Uncle Papa. And, uh, yeah, if, if you've seen my video on my other channel, when I went down and I stayed with John Clump, the old house that we were camped in front of there, it's called the Taylor Place, and uh, these are the people. Well, they were both raised right there, weren't they, Chris? They, yeah, they like grew up there. And who was it? It was Warren. So the Glens. So what happened? Benny got hold of uh, Kelly. Kelly said, "I went to school with Tom Taylor. I might have his number." Got hold of Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor got hold of Benny, and they said, and then. He gave him my number. I got Tom's number and called him and said, hey, you want to come on and tell us everything you can about everything you know. <laughs> yeah, Benny and Chris did all the work on this. So, yeah, they, uh, and we got a lot of pictures. So, a lot of pictures. Do you have at, it? I, it, it? Two days, bing, 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 my phone, bing, all night, bing, she just... Went through it, and then she gave me a description. I, I, I just couldn't, if I could save everything, but I just had to save the pictures. Like, if you pulled out a picture, I could probably go to it on my phone and show or read what she told me. I mean, there's just. Well, she'll, well when she's in, on here, she yeah. can probably, like, I can do this. Oh, yeah. And I can show yep. some pictures like this. Yeah. There's the she'll old house. Yep, she'll tell me that's Marcy McDonald and that's whoever, ever, ever. Cool. How come this so, thing's not underneath your name? It was there earlier. Oh, know, there it is. This thing does crazy. I can't move it. <laughs> I think we've been doing this for a year now, have we not? I can wrote. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Did it. Yeah. And you still, I'm find still stuff. I'm still <laughs> learning. Do you have anything interesting <laughs> happen this week? I just, you know, I made a video with the family elk hunting, but I was so busy elk hunting, I didn't get to upload it. And then I did upload it last night or got my footage to upload. And then, so I got it on my laptop, uploaded it. My kids are down here with me for spring break. So I had my laptop on there watching a movie. For some reason it, Stopped uploading after a couple videos, so I had to redo it today, and they're just still uploading. So, yeah, I was elk hunting with the family. Did you, did so you few, get an elk ever? <clears throat> so, <laughs> the last day, I didn't go. <laughs> on Sunday, I wasn't going to go. I had stuff to do because we had to come to the valley, Phoenix. My dad calls and says, there's elk over here. So, I, lucky I had pants on, I guess, threw my stuff on. All butt over there, 80 miles an hour. And I know the area really good. And he was like, we're here. I said, well, go here. They got they got where they needed to go. I said, because they're only going to go either east or south. They got over there, actually got out, 
cut him off, got a good shot at one, heard it hit. Black powder. I don't know if anybody hunts muzzleloader. They're, man, they it's not like a rifle. It's, yeah. So she's trailing it out. My dad says, he calls me again, or he gets on the radio and says, they're going south. I said, I know where they're going to cross. I get down there. And as soon as I was getting down there, he was already getting down there because Ashley was trailing out her out trying to find blood. Or, and he gets on radio and goes, they're crossing right now. And I've already, I was already, I seen them. One of them, big cow. It's a cow or bull hunt. Stopped looking at him. And a perfect 100 yard shot. I mean, I posted up. Pow, my dad said it sounded like two shots. It hit her so hard. And I think I hit her dead shoulder bone or something. <clears throat> Not a drop of blood. I trailed her out for about a mile, a good mile. Dad picks me up. I go back to my truck where I seen her. I trailed up again on both sides, trying to see if she veered off. But I, it sounded like a solid. She buckled and jumped and went. And But I tell you, with, I was with a, I bumped into a 77-year-old man there. He shot an elk. I went over where he said he found blood. There was like a two-inch piece of rib that fell out of that elk. And we trailed that elk for three miles. Wow. And it finally crossed a, a major roadway. Them elk are tough, tough critters, man. <clears throat> okay, let's go to some of these comments real quick while we're here. Louisiana hunting. What's up, guys? Lynn Gatlin. Hello, yet. guys. Uncle Johnny Papa. Uncle Johnny. <laughs> Uncle Papa Johnny. What about the mule hunt, <laughs> Brett? Me and Brenda's been getting along pretty good here lately. Uh, but You're I found kind of one. Back and forth with her. Yeah. Just like my first <laughs> wife. <laughs> That's like Benny's first wife, too. <laughs> Just like w most women. Anyway, mm -hmm. but she did real good. I This last week, I had a friend of mine call. He's And he's, a, he's an outfitter. He's a guide. He called me. He said, hey, he said, I'm up here in this canyon, and I got a fresh lion track. And I said, where? And he told me, some of the most desolate, ugly country you've seen. And But I loaded up and took the hounds and took off, got up there probably about 10.30 or 11. I talked to you, Chris. What, what was it, about 10.30, 10 o'clock? Something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And got up there and... I couldn't, it took forever to drive into there, you know, into that country. And then I got on the mule, got on Brenda and had to ride for another two, three miles down the canyon there to find where they found the track. And uh, on the way down there, I had some barks and I tried to, tried to get them going, but I wasn't sure if I was going the right way or coming back out the, you know, or if I was trailing back to where she had been. It's, you know, it's confusing without being able to find a track. And, uh. Finally got down there, found the track, got a few barks, decided where I was before, that that was right. Rode back up there and trailed all the way up and back and out and another canyon, another canyon, then up on a rim. Now, she's a little female. Her, her foot wasn't that big. And she's in there hunting. And uh, there's some deer in there and some javelina. And she was walking those rims. And then she'd go down the canyon and walk a rim. We trailed till about... I don't know, 2.30 or 3, and then uh, just, that was it. It was done. It was over with. It was good, though. Dogs did good. I had a good time. Brenda did good. Brenda. Beautiful Brenda. She did good. You're on mute. You're still on mute. I muted it because my old lady's over there talking crap right now. Your first wife? Or my no, third, that'd be like your I'm fifth gonna, wife. This is my third my third, my third legal wife, I'll say. Oh. <laughs> the rest of them were borrowed. I'm going to turn the camera on you. So, uh, what were you talking about? I was distracted. Oh, uh, I was talking about my, my oh. lion hunt. So you think it's because she, you kept her busy though? You were going, going, going maybe? Instead of just riding through nice and calm? Following dogs? No, I think she's, I think she's learning that I'm not going to put up with what, she was trying to do. 
yeah. think she's, you know, I, I'm not scared to reach up and poke one in the shoulder with a spur. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, when you, when you're riding and you're riding along and they decide they want to go that way and they lock that jaw and throw that shoulder out, man, I, 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 yeah. I put a shoulder, I put a spur in their shoulder and snatch them mm -hmm. around, but she's, she's doing good. She did real good. I was kind of proud of her that day, but let's see. we got a question here. Zachary. Zachary I'm not going to try to say your last name. Stump. 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 What do you think about running walkers for lions, bears, bobcats, and hogs? There's good I ones in every. Can run. There's good ones yeah. in every breed. You can run. Everybody asks, what do you think about this dog or that dog? You can run any dog and anything. That's all I'm going to say. Whatever your preference is. Chuck Miller's here. Cool. Early. Early. W glad to, glad to hear about Brenda. Yeah, she's doing all right now. There's a mule I was looking at over in uh, Arizona there that I'm I'm still thinking I might go get. I don't know. And then uh, Ty Hair up in uh, uh, up by Rio Doso, he has a really really good mule, and he told me just come get him. I said you can pay me when you want. He said, but I know you'll love him. So I got my options. <laughs> Admitted history nerd right there. Cool. We got some history for you today. Mm -hmm. I got a blood trailing Catahoula bloodhound cross. Keeps me extremely beer and busy during D season. That, that'd be fun to do. I always wanted to get a blood dog. Yeah. Man, you just having all kinds of problems tonight, Chris. <laughs> I thought I already turned that off, my ringer. <laughs> and Bryson, he's from North Carolina. He knows I do a live on Monday. <laughs> is that, my, is I Uncle, say that. Papa I better Johnny turn my to, ringer off. I know. Uncle John, Uncle Papa Johnny, is he saying I had forty my 42nd wife? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> The other 39 weren't mine, though. <laughs> he just borrowed them from someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was easier and cheaper that way. <laughs> what else? Any questions before we weekend. start? I'll, I'll go ahead and... Should I run the little video I made right now? Yeah, yep. Get it. Get it going. Let people know what we're talking about. This is the place that we went and stayed at. When I... down in the Pelencios. Kind of set that up. And then let's see if I can find this. So the, the That's the house. That too. This is when they lived there in that house. John Klomp bought all this property or their family bought it off their family right look at that who we have on tonight don't you oh, know no, those I guys guess. were rough <clears throat> the Mc... there's a lot of mcdonald's some garcia's mixed in all this so i got uh tina sent me all sideways. these pictures over the weekend with a description of everything <clears throat> well, we're gonna how bring did I get her that? on They got lots of, lots of different stuff. War ration, book number three. What is that? Local board, huh? They, that's where the gold is, right there. There, hey, there's a. What is if that? You go to one of those pictures. There's an invoice. I don't know. That's I'm a sure brand of some sort. But if you one of those pictures has an invoice for what a car, that? and it was like seven hundred dollars. Those are all the petroglyphs. Oh, there's, I miss she, those. I've been on a little, a bunch on my other channel, I've been on a little petroglyph kick. Wow. Those look like they're pretty modern. 
Maybe it's chalk. Oh, those are old pictures, though. Yeah. Re- oh, that's a report card off of one of the girls when she was four years old. That was a report card. <clears throat> Yeah, there's some hound dogs. Yeah. I got a lion on the car. Yeah, there's a picture of a lion in here. There's a I didn't know they had bears down in that country. Maybe back in the nineteen hundreds. Well really. John did say that every now and then they they get a bear down in there. So did you send me everything to send them the link? I sent you their numbers. Did you tell uh but you told him at six o'clock, so we got a few more minutes. So. Yeah. You know, I believe that Chuck, because I think uh, John kept. You know, John's kind of interested in gold. <laughs> he, he was always talking. He said, matter of fact, when they asked him, they did that little interview about, you know, what's his f- favorite uh, breed of cow? What is his least favorite job on the ranch? And this and this. And if he wasn't a cowboy or a rancher, what would he do? He said a gold miner. That gold fever is no joke. Right now, we jumped a little mine. My dad did. And there's some stuff that might be worth $250 an ounce. It's called, I don't know, Papago something. But my dad knows all that stuff more than I do. <clears throat> so he's ready to go back out there and check it out again to take a take a sample down to a guy who knows. But you get once you get into that, oh yeah, you get hooked. I just you start like that finding your own little piece. Mm-hmm. That treasure hunting, that's, it is. it's, it's, there's some guys, when I owned my property up there in the mountains, there were some guys that I let stay on the other half of the property. I had like 69 acres up there and it was remote, no, no cell phone service, no nothing. It had like, these were like survival guys. And, you know, we had like nine springs on the place and everything. It was real beautiful property. And these guys stay on this other, and they were, they were strange guys, you know, they were older men, probably in their 70s, something like that. And uh, the one guy died, he passed away. And I got to talking to the other guy and uh, he, he, he said they had a gold mine where they were looking for this gold in the Cavallo Mountains. And they said they think they had it located, of course, just like every treasure hunter. And, uh, but he was serious about it, I mean, real serious. And then, in this storage room that we had out there it was just an old building. He said, we're going to, he said, uh, we're going to have some people come up here and get some of this stuff. It's what my buddy left went in there. And I mean, it was spooky. They had automatic rifles. They had ammunition <laughs> just out the, I mean, everywhere they had dynamite. They had everything in the world. I said, you can't store this stuff here on my property. <laughs> You get me in trouble. And, uh, Not unless I got a key. Yeah, well, <laughs> but they, I mean, they had a, uh, uh, I don't know, it's one of those machine guns with, with the legs on it. Oh, yeah, like a I saw mean, or M60. Fully automatic. They were convinced that it, that, it, that the, you know, everything was going to collapse. But maybe they were just ahead of their time. Yeah, I think a lot of people are ahead of their time right now. John Clump, I believe that the gold might be on his property in the those cabezas, just north of the cherry cows. Yeah, he talks about that. He talked about that often. So how many dogs you know, here? Zachary, how many dogs you need to hunt hogs? I don't know. I don't hunt hogs. <clears throat> well, they got catch dogs and trail dogs. I know that. I tried to get, I actually was supposed to, I'm talking to a guy who does that hog hunting and I wanted to get him on cause that just the deer hunting guy was pretty interesting. So I think if we got though. someone on here to do some hog hunting, it'd be pretty cool. Susan, I've got an, a complete interview with, uh, with John Clump and I'm trying to get it out. Susan it's going to be Stone. shared as a podcast first 
through W Hunting Supply. And then uh, I have the video portion of it, and I'll put it up on, on this channel right here. So soon, soon. I, uh, hey, guess who's coming on my show Wednesday? Who's that? Missy. Good old Missy. Missy? I, I might gonna have talk... to just drop in there. We're going to, well, we're, you seen what uh, Oregon's doing? Ugh. What are they doing now? Horrible. Um, like basically letting the people decide without votes. Uh, they got a new commissioner guy coming in. I don't know. She's Missy's going to talk about it. I'm trying to get her and Nicholas. Nicholas try to get on too. Oh, good. Missy we, uh... sent me that big link about it. And it's kind of, it's, you know, it's a protocol. They do it in one state. They're going to start doing it in another. Do you see where the lion ate the bicycler or attacked the bicycler in Washington? No. There was a uh, three older women that were riding their bicycles and uh, a young uh, Tom lion attacked the last one, took her down, bit her in the face. And these other, these other ladies got after it and started hitting it with rocks. And they ended up, the lion wouldn't let go. And they ended up pinning, pinning the lion. They put a bicycle over the lion and, and pinned it down. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Did they, did they just hold it there until someone showed up? Yeah, yeah. The whoever showed up, I don't know. Why didn't they just? They would have been just just a inst, like sensational internet star if they just choked it out right there, armbar. Just yeah. Choked they, said, they said they needed a gun, but I think in Washington it's illegal for them to carry a gun. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> they, they would probably got a ticket for harassing wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get these people on real quick. See if I can figure out how to do this. Oh, look who has decided to join. Oh. Benny's always to Maybe. the right of us. <laughs> You're on, Benny. Say something to us. How's your, how's your drive? What do you want me to say? That's good enough. My, yeah, we're my good. first wife <laughs> is doing just great. Oh, yeah. Your first <laughs> wife had a oral surgery today. Tooth extraction. And more. And more. Um, severe deep cleaning from a periodontist. And Ooh. yeah, so she has to eat pudding. Hmm. Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> she says that's enough about her. Well, I was going to say, we're not even going to pick on her. We're just going to, we all got quiet. <laughs> I was going to say, now, what? if it was you, Benny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never take hunting away you know i i think in arizona they could have done that already to where they make it you make the vote they should have done it back a while ago where you put the states in charge of the conservation kind of hard to do it now who's eddie lackner anybody know eddie lackner yes he's a He's a rancher over by, um, oh, criminy. What's that? Can Air Viper. Another good outlaw hunter would have been Eddie Lagner on the Four Mile Ranch in the Galileros. Galileros. Another good. Where, where'd you read that? Who said that? Chuck Miller. Chuck oh. Miller sure knows a lot. How can we never get him on? We, we always talk about it. We need to get him on. Susan? Look at Susan. Susan kind of disappeared for a little while. I thought we razzed her too much, but now she's she got, back on. And she got mad at she us. She don't know about. She don't know about Benny's first wife. <laughs> she got mad. She got mad at us because <laughs> of uh, our Facebook talk. <laughs> we got off subject. Imagine that. Yeah, we do. But we <laughs> still love you, Susan. Time. Susan only wanted. A Why time. is Benny? 
Why is Benny's name Tulip? Must be new. Hey, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah, there's another story coming. We told it before, but we uh when Benny went hunting with me when I lived way up there in the mountains and it was cold. Very cold. Very cold. He laughed. I mean, he <laughs> he laughed. Breeze. I mean, <laughs> We were up there, and I stopped, and the sun went down, and I was putting on my down coat and my hoodie and everything to stay warm, and he had a little Levi jacket on. All I could see was him going over the next hill. So I started teasing him about the cold. I said, man, you, you're just like a tulip. When it gets cold, you're going you're gonna to just wilt. And uh, <laughs> so the name tulip star- uh, stuck. Okay, here's Tom. Tom Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor's joining us right here, right now. There he is. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Can you hear us? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Benny. I suppose. Benny told us and Chris, uh, <laughs> you were you, you were raised there at the at that that old rock house? Well, I was raised actually in that. That was my, when I was a little kid, that was my grandmother and grandfather's house. And there was one just around the turn in that other deal you did with Johnny Clump. He rode a horse around the bend right there at the barn. Yes, sir. And, and just past that bend was a little road. It's still there. It turns off to the right and it went up there at the house I was raised in. But I was raised on that same ranch. Yes, sir. Do you, you remember that place, Benny? Yeah, that's where we drive. That we ride through, and we go. Through, we stop and go through a gate right there. There's an old foundation overlooking the creek there, Brett. Okay. Okay. Cool. Did you yeah. see? Did you see the video that I little video I made of uh of of the place there? Yes. Yeah. You, you watch. My it. sister should have sent you a picture of the old house that was taken off of that mountain. Behind there, and, and, and of course, they they tore the house down. But there was a picture, and you looking off that mountain down there at the house. I oh, I have got sent me about ten thousand pictures. <laughs> Where is your? Did you yeah, your link, I, right? I got a lot of pictures here. Whoop! There's many. Did you, send, there. did you send Tina a link? Yes, I did. I just sent it to her. Okay. I got lots and lots of pictures. If you see any oh. that you have a story to, let us know. Yeah, the guy in the middle of that picture, I believe, I can't tell real sure, but I believe that was my great-grandfather. It's kind of small on this screen. We called him Gramp. His name was William MacDonald. Bill MacDonald, the neighbor there that you asked me about, was named after him. That's, that's uh, the same... It was also his great grandfather. So, whoop! There's and he's Tom. Is he the one that that newspaper article was about, where he passed away there in Douglas at eighty six yes. years old or something? Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, he's the one. Now that one I think is Al Terry. That is a relative, but not a close relative of ours. I believe that's who that is. I'm, I can't swear to that. Tina's probably more apt to know the answer to that one. I do not know who that one there is. I really you don't. You know, I, I I could look. She sent me a description. Is this the house right here? Yeah. I, no, that's the one. That's where no, we that's stayed. The rock house. That's the Let's rock see. house there. Okay. That's man. We got a bunch of these pictures. Round. What's that house right Rock. there? That's it. That's it right there. Now that was that was before they added on to it. I believe that looks like it from the picture. Added on. It was it's an huge. old adobe house, huh? That's a big house as it That's is right grand, there. I know. That is actually my great granddad right there. That is that is William. That's Gramp. That's the one that that died in Douglas. In '58, where'd the catfish come there. from? I have probably that was taken down here in Texas because they moved from 
over around Harper, Texas, if you know where that is, close to Kerrville. They moved from there on the Pertinalis River out to uh, over by Duncan was where they went first. There was some of them died that winter with the flu and they're buried on a hillside over there by Duncan. And then later he went to Silver Creek. Do you know where Silver Creek is? No. That's those Indian pictographs at Bill McDonald's. Anyway, there's a bar on Highway 80 about probably 15 miles out of Douglas, right out in the middle of nowhere. Used to be a bar, yeah. may still be there a bar, I don't know. But he built, he was the first man to own that bar. That's where he went from Duncan to there and from there to over there, Cottonwood. Did uh, So you were you were raised out there at the Taylor place? You're yes, close. Yes. Sir. Okay. No, I was go. raised there. Here we go. Here's your sister. She's got on now. She's on right <laughs> now. There she is. Yep, there she is. Welcome. She's wilder looking than I am. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> So where where are you located at now, Tina? Whoa, I, there you are. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I'm going to put you on a tripod. So I Perfect. Can this. Um, I am about 10 miles south of Kennedy, Texas, which is in south central Texas. So, and you were raised at the Taylor Place also? I was, I was, yes. I'll be dang. I'll go. I'll. I'll... That flooded all the pictures. Yeah, let me let me start pulling them up, and if you see one that's got a story to it, tell us the story. All right. Okay. Yeah. That that's those pictographs. Actually... That's the Indian graffiti. Um, that is. <laughs> Not on the ranch that we were raised on, but we went down there and messed around a lot. It was uh, on the Sycamore Canyon Ranch. Did you? But well, did y'all? That was originally that was all one ranch, though. And like yes, like yeah, I told you, they that they my great grandfather split it up between his three kids. So that was my grandmother's brother's place that those pictures were taken on, but it was part of the old original ranch. Yes. Where was that in relation to the Taylor place? Um, okay. If you, if if you, you go back. Toward, uh, when, uh, Tom, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, if you go back okay. toward Douglas, you cross that bridge there. After you leave the rock house, you're going toward Douglas, and you cross a little old bridge there. That's Cottonwood and Sycamore run together right up there. Go down there about another mile and turn off to the right and back up there in the canyon is are those pictographs. Okay. We were close to there. Did you all know the Glens pretty good? Oh, yeah, we knew them all of our lives. Warner and Wendy and that bunch, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you send me a picture a with Marvin in it? Tina? Say again? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you, send, didn't you send a couple of pictures with Marvin in it? I sent, no, I didn't, but I, I, uh, I did put in there like the picture with the hounds and the bear. Um, yep. That was my granddad, Dale Lee and Marvin Glenn's hounds that were in those pictures. Uh, that's, that's what I said. I still have one of it in the back of the picture. It talks about one of the dogs getting killed the next day. And ironically, his name was Lucky. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> All right. What? Where did the bear, where did they catch the bear at? Uh, you know, it didn't say, I think it was probably in the Cherokee house. The Cherokee house. Yeah. Did y'all ever know of any was bears that? there in the Pelincios? Oh, yeah. Once in a great there. while. Not very many. But, uh, they're, they're getting more common, I think. Um, 
we we had an when we were kids one time the horses come into water every evening and <laughs> they all got spooked and run over each other and <laughs> turned out it was a bear coming in there scared them and of course always a lot of lions in that country wasn't there yes yeah yeah there was quite a few mountain lions did did y'all have hounds or our granddad did he he was an avid hound dog man he trained and sold them and traded them and you know just he always had a bunch of hounds and there's the house Whoop. Yeah, originally that second story was not on that house. <laughs> Mom and Dad built the second story on it. Yeah, that 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 was added in about seventy nine. That second story, but there are pictures of it without that. There you go. That's without that it. Is... Yeah. And and who are who are these people? Okay, that's Ain't um... Florence on the isn't it? Let me, you know, I'm going to have to orient this camera because it's cutting the pictures off, but I can, um, Whoop. that is, okay, the one to the far right is William McDonald, or Gramp, is we, that was our great granddad. The woman next to him was Rhoda Jane McDonald, his wife, and then the, the guy to her left was one of her brothers, Wesley and his wife is is who that is and that picture was taken about 1940. when they came into that country they, did they come from texas yes yes they did they uh well no no they originally came from harper dripping springs and they went to eagle creek and there's a picture in there of eagle creek um where they settled which is near duncan arizona and then william mcdonald and his wife rhoda and her parents and brothers come south and settled at lee station which is east of douglas out by silver creek castle dome out in that area and that's where my grandmother was born in 1904 and and her dad was cutting timber off of the Cherokees and selling it to the mines in bisbee and selling wood in douglas and work he then went to work for the 3c cattle company which was the Cherokee cattle company and then in i believe 06 or 07 they moved to cottonwood and uh, there, there was like 11 of them, and they all homesteaded parcels of land. And then he ended up buying out Buddy. So that's how he put that ranch together. Was the that Cottonwood Cemetery, had, had it been, was it there already? No. 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 Um... There was a couple of people buried in it. I think the oldest grave in there, Tom, correct me on this if I'm wrong. I think the oldest grave in there is 1891. I think that's right. I think. And uh, then in the Depression, uh, WPA actually come and built that rock wall around it. That was one of the government projects. Uh, but uh, it kind of become a family or community cemetery. There. We we never made it down there, did we, Benny? No, but next time I'm down there, I'm going to go look. But I'm curious over there at Eagle Creek, it, did uh, did the copper company end up buying that ranch? You, you know, I really don't know. Um, I, I honestly can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know. They may have. Today. Um, say again. Today, John Clump is, is leasing that Eagle Creek Ranch 
from Freeport McMorrin and his son Austin lives down there. And to my knowledge, that's the only place on Eagle Creek in that area, but I could be mistaken. I Maybe, really don't know. Um, now, I Tina and I have a friend that has a ranch there that his, a guy that worked for him said he thought he knew where those family members were buried on a ranch that he had run at one time, but he didn't say who he worked on it for. He just said that he thought he knew where that those graves were. They had been marked at one time, and when Tina and I were little kids, Gramp had built one of them old wrought iron cemetery fences around it or had it built. Yeah, that's the bear picture. And uh, yeah, yeah, no. Grandma wanted to redo it. We went over there and got it and never got back over there to put it up. And I couldn't find those graves now if my life, if you held a gun to my head. I have no, I, I could probably get close, but I couldn't find them. Is it is it a big uh, cemetery? No, no, it was only the, no, it's no, not, oh, Cottonwood? Are you talking about Cottonwood or the one at Eagle Creek? Eagle Creek. No, no, no it was it just was, the family. Was, I think there's nine nine graves there, I think. Um, oh. there, there was nine of them, I think, died after they got there. One of them was my... my Mother, my grandmother's grandmother, Rhoda Jane's mother, died and is buried there. And uh, I think there was one brother and a couple of babies. Um, they got there, I think, about the time that Spanish flu broke out, and they had that epidemic through there. Oof. And it it got some of them. But if you read the bottom of that, it says Mexican house at Eagle, Eagle Creek. Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's the guys that built most of that rock house, Henry dead. and Jess Cox. And, and our family tree doesn't fork very often. <laughs> um, my mother was a tailor, and she married a tailor. And the Coxes were on my actual dad's side of the family, <laughs> but well, closer up. So, you know, we're like our own second cousin twice removed or something. There's you some hound dogs. My first grade teacher thought I was, my first grade teacher thought I was retarded because I kept telling her my mother's maiden name was Taylor. And she drove all the way from Douglas to the ranch one Sunday to find out mom's maiden name was Taylor. <laughs> yeah. I went through the same thing to say, what's your mother's maiden name, Taylor? No, no, her name before she got married. Yeah, I know what you mean, but it was Taylor. She was a Taylor and she married a Taylor. But uh, that's that's what they did for entertainment, evidently, was go climb around on the rocks in their Sunday clothes, you know. <laughs> Good exercise. But I guess. I guess there wasn't a whole lot to do. Look at that. But, uh, you recognize that place? Now that's in Estes Canyon. Yes, I do. That's in Estes Canyon where that is. And they bound a road up there horseback or something. Maybe they had cars by then. I don't know because it didn't have a date on it. But that is, that's a pretty treacherous country. Um, that was a Sunday We've been school there, class. Brett. Did we go there, Ben? When y'all were with. Yes. Y'all were right uh, across the okay, mountain yeah. from it at one time. You know when you were talking about well, the lion being up on the up in the rocks? On the, in, up in when the you rock? were talking Johnny uh, Clump and, and you said something about the lion being up in the rocks. If you go on over that mountain you're in Estes then. The next canyon over yeah. is Estes. Yeah. I, it would have been to the east. Where that of cat you. gave us the slip. Yeah. Where we were trailing yeah. uh, yes. in the mud and the cat gave us a slip, that was Estes Canyon. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. If you, I, look, uh, if you look across the country, look across the country to the north, and all that stuff across the country is Hog Canyon, and that's where Tyler was. Oh, okay. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. 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 That's the first time I'll tell you yeah. a story on my sister. It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> but the first time I ever heard her cuss, she was about ten years old, 
that I was probably 11 or 12. Mom and dad, we had we had a forest permit for 30 head of cows. And and it was up there in Hog Canyon, and there's a tank up there. It's just a dam across the creek. And dad wanted us to take those cows to, the, to Hog Canyon. And they were going to town to get feed and stuff, and they sent me and Tina with those 30 cows to Hog Canyon. And he told us, said, now you kids don't just put them through that gate. Take them all the way to the tank so they know where water is. Well, we didn't have any TV. All we ever did was watch TV at my dad's brother's house when we were in town. And anyway, I had an old Herford Cross cow that belonged to me that my granddad had given me, and she was just as lazy as she could be. We got up there in a spot that it was straight up bluff, about 20 foot high on one side, and straight down about 20 foot high on the other side, and just a little old narrow trail had to go by, and she got in the middle of that trail and wouldn't go. And I was at the back of the bunch, just whip. I was wearing out a rope on the back cow, trying to get her to go on. And Tina went down there in the creek, and she was throwing rocks up there at that old cow of mine. And then a little bit, she said, I'd sure like to see one of them effing stampedes. They're always showing on television. <laughs> I learned to cuss a lot better. But, uh, you learn how to cuss pushing was, cows uh, around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that what? was that was pretty rough, and that cow had horns, and she wouldn't let none of the other cows go by her. And, uh, I got a question. I actually, oh, yes. The that what was that called? Outlaw Mountain, Benny. Yes. Oh. Outlaw Mason. Mm -hmm. Outlaw Mountain. Tell us a story about that. Yeah. How did it get its name? Do you know? Okay, yes, yes that's, I do know. That's, that's, I know the folklore behind it. Let's hear it. Um, Clant Some. Clanton Canyon. Do you know where Clanton Canyon is? Mm -mm. No. Okay, you go on over. You stay on Geronimo Trail, and when you top out, like you were going to go to Animus, um, you have crossed Clanton Canyon 17 times. It oh, okay. is the watershed that comes from Cloverdale, New Mexico, and runs down through there. And that's where the Clantons, the outlaws that were in the gunfight in Tombstone, were actually where their homestead was, was in that area. And there, story has yeah, it last time Pancho Villa oh, from Pancho Villa's days on. Even before that, there was like an old wagon road through there. The Mormon battalion mm -hmm. come through there, coming from Salt Lake or going to Salt Lake. And um, supposedly the outlaws would actually hide their gold between there and Skeleton Canyon before they went over that pass to keep, you know, because it was such a hard climb for horses and mules and stuff. And if the law got after them, you know, they could get in those canyons and get away from them. And that's how come they said they hid in those caves and stuff and lived in those caves on that mountain. I'll be dang. Uh, and when the be back when they're looking for gold. When the, oh, they I, dug I up our water any. trough one time hunting the treasure skeleton. They, uh, when, they, when the Mormon battalion come through there, they got up there on that mountain and got boxed in. They couldn't, they'd either go all the way back to the Animus Valley and come around by San Simone and the Cherokees, and they let those wagons and their teams off of the, that bluff on ropes. And they dropped one of them wagons, and Dad knew where it was at one time. It had grown up a lot by the time we come along, but there was old, like, broken up furniture and, and, uh, one of our cousin's uncle found an old rifle there that where they'd come out of one of them wagons when they dropped them. And it's on Outlaw Mountain where that happened. I'll be dang, yeah. Then, uh, <clears throat> I guess the way John said, there's like, there's only one place to get up on top of it. You have to go through that little old crack, I guess, up there in it. And uh, yeah. yes. it was pretty well protected. Actually, one way up, one way and, down. And, it's, and, uh, and, and the one in front the of it, the smaller one. Oh, sorry. A, a mountain. You talking about A mountain? 
Yeah, the smaller one is the same way. It it has access. It's got that rim rock almost all the way around it. And either you gotta, you know, be like a monkey and climb the rim rock, or if you're gonna actually just walk walk up there, ride a horse. There's just one way up there and one way down. And there's a lot of lot of Indian artifacts up there. Um, there's up until they started running wetbacks so bad through there, I, I think there was country that no white man had seen, you know, in but, um, now Speaking. there's like, last time we were there, there was diapers and clothes and all kinds of mm -hmm. crap up there. Speaking of illegals, did uh, what was it like back in those days when y'all were there? What was it? Wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was bad. nothing we like it a, is now. We had a kid. That's partly why we left, though. We had a, how old were we when Owl come in there in that snowstorm? I think I was 10, maybe. Remember Al, Raul or Owl, the yeah. Mexican boy that yeah. left the pickup that yeah. stayed with us so long? Um, yeah. He was probably maybe 13, 14 years old and come in there in a snowstorm, a bad snowstorm, had no coat. He was almost froze to death when he he walked up, finally got to our, he, he was just lost. You know, he was trying to get to the United States and lost and hadn't eaten in three or four days. And my folks kind of took him in and worked him. And, uh, you know, he was close to our age or Tom's age. And he stayed about eight months. And uh, we had gone to town. We had this this horse that was still a stud horse, and my dad told him not to mess with him. Well, we got home from town, and and uh, I told dad, I said that boy rode that horse. He was messing with that horse. He tried to saddle him with my saddle, and the breast collar was upside down, and the flank cinch was off. And uh, he asked him, "Oh, no, no, no." And then it was what Tom about a month when he run the pickup off in the creek. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a he was a good kid. We built that. I don't know if it's he still was. there or not. Um, up there where Clump said they had the wedding. Yep. Under that oak tree. Okay, that was our dead tree. Like anything, an old cow died at the house, or horse died, or something. We drug them up there under that tree, and uh, we built an arena. Tom and I and that wetback boy, one summer. I don't know if it's still there or not, but yeah. I don't know you how many post holes we that. dug by hand. You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> uh, no. But, They're undocumented uh, immigrants. Uh, you yeah. the, I'll immigrant. tell you a funny story on that. That Tina was about 15 years old. She <laughs> bought some cows from an old man up there at Bisbee. His name was Sam Yonsevich. And he was no cowboy. He would, he would dry trap them old cows and haul them to the sale. She bought two old crossbred cows from Sam, and they were wild. Oh, my God, you couldn't get in 100 yards of one of them. We was gathering cattle one year, and we was coming down a fence line that, that comes down and hits that county road right there by just before you get to that tree. And them two old cows hit a high lope, and they were going, and Dad hollered, somebody get up there at that cattle guard so they don't jump the cattle guard. And Dad's brother, Vernie, made a big old circle and started around them, and they just throwed a figure nine in their tail and took off. <laughs> Dad said, rope them. Well, there's an old man and an old lady come out there every year from Tennessee, and they'd camp under that tree, and they were bird watchers. And as soon as Dad said, rope them, I was game, too. I reached down and cinched my saddle up and jerked my rope down, and I took off being Vernie. And we got about 20 yards from their camp, and I heard the old lady say, Fred, look, real cowboys. And he was in that tent taking him a nap. And about that time, one of them old cows hit that tent and just rolled that <laughs> tent up like a big ball. And it was hung on her horns. <laughs> and she drove it off down there in the creek. And, of course, we let her go. And Vernie and I got off to see if he was hurt or anything. We come back, got back up there with Dad and him. And he said, y'all get them roped. And... Vernie said no, and he said, well, I told you to rope them. Vernie said, it's hard to rope anything when they're laughing so hard you got tears in your eyes. <laughs> it, it was funny. It didn't hurt him. It just shook him up a little bit. But it was funny when that old cow hit that tent now. He didn't think it was very funny, though.
<laughs> no, he didn't think it was funny, but it was go. funny. Now, that's okay, the old that's house. The that's the bunk house place. at the old house. That's the bunk house at the old house. That was my bedroom the growing up park. right there. <laughs> and all the those power lines before? in the back? Okay. Yeah, we had well, yeah, we a had a generator. Generator. And it, and it furnished power for three three houses. But you had to be careful. You didn't iron and, you know, run the freezer and the TV at the same time. Like if you're going to iron, you unplug the freezer, you know, it was, it had, a, it had its limits, but it sure beat kerosene lights and, and then they the put it in the day they had when we were little. We were sitting there waiting for them to start that generator up. New Mexico diesel electric put it in and they were, they were hooking the lines up when it come over the radio that the president had been shot in Dallas. So, and it, it, it was ran, started to go. Oh, those pictures are there. They're just real small. Jeez, how did that happen? So, there. was that generator? It, it, a they started the generator the day that. Yeah. Got, and we left yeah, it was a in 94. Yeah, that's the front gate. And um, it had been shut down a it total was still of less warm. than 24 hours in all that time to be majored. It had run solid all those years. 24 hours a day. And, oh, and it was so really weird. I moved down here. I moved down here and, uh, man, I couldn't sleep. And, and there's a lot of oil production around me. And one night they started one of the more one cylinder engines. I slept like a baby because everybody that come here, there's that house before it had two stories, the same side view of it. And uh, yeah. it was really weird because, you know, that felt like that was Got that picture a bunch comforting of to me, you know? Yeah, that was an old Ajax. Yeah, there was... Yes, it was, a it was a copy of Ajax. It was, well, Ajax yeah, and Whitty's are almost identical. That's our Uncle Alton right there holding the horse. I ain't oh, sure who's horse. shooing the That's horse. Mike Doherty. Mike Doherty's Doherty shooing the horse. Now, the horse was that was, was Chapel, my our mother's brother. He was, yeah. That was, Is that Alton? I think yeah, that's Alton, too, me. ain't it? Yeah, that's is. my mother's South. brother. That, and that's him with the lion. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's him with the lion. Well. That's a big old pumpkin head on that lion. Yeah, yeah. They killed some pretty good sized ones. They, and that's my mom. That's There's mama. always dogs in all the pictures. Yeah, <laughs> that's and her mom and her car. Hudson. Yeah. That's mom. Yeah. That's mom when she was 17 or 18 years old. That's probably oh, mom, yeah. too. That's her again with her yeah. dog. She was a, she was like her dad. She was definitely a dog person. Did she run she dogs? She had dogs. No, oh, yeah. she just She was a hound dog. dog and then raised dogs. And she <laughs> was just those a two. dog person. She loved dogs. Okay, is... Tom, do you know who this is? No, not right off That's hand. Alton and Punch, Alton and Punch Stevens. Steven. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's they, pretty cool. Um, That's Alton Steve, and Mom when Alton they were kids. And, yeah. Whoop, I still got this one up. It's a little confusing for me. Oh, I'm I can so understand. I, you... I just, yeah, I, it was a little confusing for me, and I knew what they were. Okay, that that's, was me and Mom. Now, that's the old original the house. Old. That's the old original house that we actually grew up in that was above the rock house. And that was the original ranch house there. The other two weren't even built. That was the first one on that ranch was that house. I think they said it was built in 1901. Is that the, the one you all stayed in, Benny? You and John? No, that one's no, gone now. House is, yeah, up that the house canyon. is gone. And there's a picture. Oh. There should be a picture in there of a big old barn, and the front part is rock, and the back part 
is like Adobe, and that was the barn at that old house up there. Oh. Did y'all did y'all by any chance leave a frying pan there when you left? <laughs> oh, probably. Mom, our mother, whenever they left and, and they bought this ranch down here, I went out there. I had a forty foot gooseneck trailer, and I went out there to help them move and. And we loaded that trailer up with dad's stuff. And I said, what do you want me to take, Mom? She said, nothing. I want new stuff. I've lived with this old stuff all my life. I want new stuff. Well, that frying so pan kept us that. alive for a week there. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a couple yeah. of them that, uh, that we managed to make the trip with. That's at the school, ain't that it? Was, Isn't that, that at the old the, Yep, that was the student body. That was the school in 1917, I think it was. Man, take that, that take, picture was taken, and that was all the students. Take a note and of how they're dressed. Was, Look at how they're dressed. That, yeah, yeah. That's that something. schoolhouse was was when you crossed that not the first cattle guard from the rock house, but the second cattle guard, the one down there by the cemetery. That schoolhouse used to be just to the left of that cattle guard on the douglas side of that fence when i don't even it may still be part of it there i've never paid any attention no. it was still there when no. tino and i were growing up <laughs> yeah look at those hats yeah. that's in something fact, i'll tell a story well, on can... tom and the schoolhouse we we used to go down there we rode we were actually feral children i mean we'd get on a horse or a mule and leave at daylight and and nobody worried about us till dark you know and, that's and what it I used mean, to we be went, explored them caves and just we just made miles you know my granddad had this mule we got some uh, pictures i was riding an old are you gonna tell about that me that getting Tom was about. Out? yeah yeah i was like four or five years old and i was riding my granddad's old done <laughs> horse named bob and tom was riding this mule named jake and we got off down there below the cemetery by the old schoolhouse and he found this casco Oh, the neatest thing in the world. So, and we're bareback, mind you. He gets off and can't figure out how he's going to pack this. And so he threads the bridle reins through the eye holes. And <laughs> proceeds to, he leads this old mule up by this old car body that was there. And he gets on him and that mule looked down and seen that skull dangling under his head. And but Tom off, took off. Tom hit gashed his head open went through the top of the, the took car off. body <laughs> and uh peel me like i was afraid boy. to go tell anybody and i finally got the mule hemmed up and caught and took him back and tom's bleeding like a stuck pig we get the house and then i got in trouble because i didn't get no didn't go get help but <laughs> we all survived <laughs> This is so. This was your grandfather. Great grandfather. That was that was great grandfather. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the one that yeah. came from Spring Creek to Eagle Creek, then on to Lee Station, and then down there to Cottonwood. He's the one that actually put that ranch together. It says him Mr. and his. Mr. McDonald was still quite active until two years ago, participating in lion and bobcat hunts. He was preceding death, but not all oh, dang. I don't know if Tina sent that picture. My daughter don't know if she even has it. But there used to be a picture of him at, at the house that he built later. And the gate going into the corrals had a, a pole over it. And he's got bobcats hanging on that pole. There must have been 10 or 12 of them it. hanging on that pole was cool that was hunts. over the gate. Was it coons? Maybe it was. Well, anyway. There was coon hides on the barn wall on that old red barn. They had oh, the yeah, there was coon hides on that old barn, yeah, everywhere. Who's that little but, Who's that little girl on that, that little horse, pony? That is Luis Garcia. That's a little boy, but that's the, Luis Garcia. Who's the Garcias? Okay. Okay, that Rhoda was my McDonald's. great-grandmother's family. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell them, William, Tina. W William McDonald, the one that come from Harper, the, the old guy that you just read his, his article about him dying, that was his wife. 
And her dad, there will be a couple of pictures in there that are like old tintype photographs. And I think you can actually tell they are. That's one of her brothers and his wife. Um, these are smaller in there. But anyway, that's her parents. And her dad came from Spain. He was appointed by the king of Spain to come to Texas to help establish the land grants. His name was Joseph Garcia. And that was another of her brothers. Anyway, uh, her mother, Rhoda Jane McDonald, was his daughter. And um, she was actually married to Johnny Ringgold to start out with. And huh. the outlaw. The outlaw. And yeah. uh, I don't know what happened. They had the marriage annulled. And she ended up marrying William McDonald. But, and. You know, Johnny Ringo was killed in Leslie Canyon, mysteriously, and I often, the family rumor was that Gramp had actually killed him, but I don't know, because he made the mistake of following her out there. I don't uh, know if that's true or not. Makes a good story, though. But, the, yeah, uh, a heck of a story, ain't it? That whenever my grandmother died, we were going through a bunch of her stuff and found a letter from the King of Spain, Granton. Rhoda's dad the right to uh, establish the land grants in Texas for the country of Spain. We turned it over to a museum in Texas. So they have yeah, it now, yeah. Tina. We we figured it was yeah. better served in the Texas Museum at Goliath than anything we'd okay, ever that, do with it. Look at those. Is, uh, I don't know. Our I cousins. Think. That is GT and Junior Fairchild on their donkeys. That's what I was going to say. That's, that was taken over probably, well, I don't know, maybe, probably at the Thomason, wasn't it? Maybe. Yeah, yeah I th think it's. And that is uh, Florence McDonald, Florence Fairchild, when she was a little one. She There's was a lot one. cuter when she was little. And that <laughs> lady that's standing in the back of that picture. Right there is that little the same person as that little girl. That's her, you know. Yeah, that's like five years later. And that that's is that that junior and GT. GT. No, it's it's Gramp and GT yeah, that's cool. and Ward and and yeah. April. And yeah. Okay, Ward. But that's taken on the steps at the Rock House. Yeah. It's the same picture. The There's the catfish the, picture. Kind of the entrance. Yeah, in that, that rock was house, Grant. Got like porch, and that there's a porch going when you step into the rock house. There's a porch there, and there's a in in rock up on the wall. It says 1940. Is that the year that rock house was built? That's the, yeah. That's the year it was built. Yeah, yeah. that's the year that it was built. Yeah. And originally that porch was not enclosed. It was it was open. Look at that and price. They closed it. Um, now that's the bill that's the bill on what? for that brand i think cottonwood ranch i think it's the one for here by no it's it the one for the brand? oh no that's a chevrolet. a chevrolet that's grandma leona's yeah. grandma leona's first car see, cost a whopping 700 and something dollars seven hundred and seven dollars october 1977 yeah you can't even register a car for that now no, I know. No, you can't even. You I can't know. buy. You can't buy a set I, of tires know, I just, for it. I said that, that I now. thought it was interesting. I don't know if everybody else thinks it's interesting or not, but that's. Uh, it was a different time. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Well, she uh -huh. told about Go going to town, like going to Douglas was a a major undertaking. You know, even then they had a car, but it was like a three days you know and i probably the road wasn't any worse the cars were just worse and uh i know <laughs> you you went out there you know how bad the road is um but about the um, first car that's she something. said they would leave like early in the morning and make it to slaughters and camp and then they would go on to douglas and get what they needed and make it back to slaughters the second, and then they would go home on the third day. Yeah. 
so he was going to ask a question a while ago, and and he didn't get I'm to sorry. ask it. Got him. That was that was minutes ago. I forgot. <laughs> um, Something another about seven hundred dollars in the car. But oh, well, a lot of money but, back then, you know. Oh yeah, you know when Tina and I were kids, I can remember a drought hitting out there. I was thinking about that the other day. I was listening to the cattle market report. And I was watching a sale in, I think, in Nebraska, and they sold some Brangus heifers in there for $4.09 a pound. They weighed 433 pounds, and I got to thinking, 1962 or so, we had a drought out there, and if you had a $20 bill, you could buy a cow. If you had $100, you could have bought five cows. <laughs> Like boy, the cow market's different now. Oh yeah, my cousin, then, you know, cousin's a rancher. Look at that. Store. Your cousin what? He's a rancher, and the prices are ridiculous. Here you go. You oh, they go, are. You could go buy a place. Yeah. Look at that. Two hundred and forty acres, twenty-five cents per acre. Sixty bucks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Douglas, yeah. Arizona, was, uh, 1914. That was the year Arizona become a state. 25 cents per acre. Heck, I could afford to buy a ranch at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could buy a big one. I could, I, could, I could own one the size of the gray, 25 cents an acre. I, I might have to borrow a little bit of money, but. <laughs> Benny, Benny lend it to you. 160 hey, acres. I just cut, the, just cut the kids' allowance off for a week. I, that that up pretty quick. <laughs> Tom, when you and I okay, were Okay, that on was the a... Go ahead. Go ahead. When you and I were talking what? When you and I were talking on the phone and we were talking about John buying pieces and trying to put that deal back together, and you asked about the forest permit, um, that the Forest Service told John that whoever it was he bought the place from hadn't done anything with their permit, hadn't filed, they hadn't done something. So the Forest Service told John he couldn't have it. And they gave it to, officially they gave it to Walmart, but Walmart can't, can't utilize it because there's no water and there's no way to get the cattle from Walmart's country over there. So that is that new fence, Brett, where they fenced everything off so that clumps couldn't get to it. And basically, nobody can utilize that forest permit because of the way it is. Yeah, that, well, it wasn't real wow. good when we had it because you had a three-month limit on it. And originally, it was a three months you never needed it. And at that time, there was only two people in the Forest them. Service office in Douglas. It was in the post office, and the forest ranger's name was Ed Carr. And Dad went down there and finally convinced Dad to talk to the Forest Service, and they finally give us a permit that we could use it any three months out of the Six year, months. but you could only use it three months in a twelve-month period. And but it there was only one, like they say, there's no water up there. That one tank is the only place, and it never held water very long. And you could only use it when it rained. And our original permit, Tina may correct me, but if I remember right, the original permit was January, February, and March. And it was useless then. When you could run them in the summertime, it was kind of worth well, it, but it was, it was useless to a woman. That's all of our brands. There, there, was a spring. there was a spring there. That they had drove a pipe. It didn't actually come to the surface. They drove a piece of pipe back in the side of this mountain, and it trickled water all the time. But by the time we left there, it had dried. It was really iffy. Like in the rainy season, it would actually be, you know, productive. But in dry season, when you really needed it, it wasn't. We had set up like a water hauling system at the lower end of we actually got onto the forest and haul water is how we utilized it the most because at the time of year that we could use it, there usually wasn't water up there. And it was not much fun driving a water truck up there, I can tell you that. 
We had some adventures been along that those little... lines. Brett, you and I have been on that two-track road. The dogs went over there, and we went through a wire gate to go get the dogs back over there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we went right. up there, what was it, Tom, about a half a mile up there past that wire gate where the water troughs were set. Yeah, maybe that far. It wasn't very far. It was before you ever got into the canyon or anything, kind of on a little, it's a little sloping place, but it was fairly flat for that part of the world. I mean, there's no place in that part of the world it's flat. When I first come to Texas, they were talking about rough country. I said, we'd have built a roping arena here. This is not <laughs> rough country. <laughs> you know, this, is, this, this, this is pretty level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that old country's pretty rough. People don't realize how rough that country is. And that's what was that one there? This one right there? No, that's the that yeah, I that guess was, uh, that's the McFarland. yeah that one McFarland and yeah, that's, James that's selling a brand or whatever. But that's oh, that's where he Grant bought that Cape Cross Bar bread. Yeah. yeah, from Fanny McDonald. Yeah. 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 You could say we're horses. That's Graham. And the lady and in the Rhoda. In the, yeah, and the lady in the white dress lived to be 103 years old. Oh, wow. Wow. And see that? How tall you see was that your saguaro cactus right there? He was about six three or six four. He was pretty tall. Um, he was like Bill did McDonald. You did Bill you ever McDonald? meet Bill McDonald? Oh, I... Just in his pickup. Yeah, he's, he's, he's never about as tall as Graham. He's a little taller than Graham. He's like six seven. Him and Warner are about the same height. Sure yeah, that, that saguaro cactus grew up to be a big old cactus, and in 67, when that snowstorm hit, it died. And it, it was up there at the old house. We took it out. There is that picture again. It's dark. Now you, oh now you God, dig up. A, so now, that's the shipping pens at Douglas. That was Gramp's crew shipped cattle at the railhead in Douglas. I have another picture you're taking there of all the cowboys that I don't I can't find it but they're all lined up on horseback outside the pens pardon I seen if Brett could zoom in on those a little bit let me see if I can find it I'm I, I get lost in here sometimes with these pictures <laughs> there's a right. lot of pictures I'm so sorry <laughs> no that's all right this is it's good fine. He says, is this good? I said, just keep sending them. I love looking at them. I, I do, too. I just can't. I get a – I got – I put them all in a file. There it you, is. You go to bed at night – go to bed at night and dream about a $70 car <laughs> and 25 cent an acre land. That's as far as it'll zoom, Chris. Oh, I got it. All right. Uh, you know, I could – Yeah. Look at the electric lines. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know um, if you know where the pins was, were. That would be looking back toward Douglas from the pins, but the pins were out yeah, there by you, where the smelter was at Douglas. When I was a little kid, we were still shipping cattle on the rail because when Tina and I were kids, auction barns were not a real big thing. I don't know if that's the picture I was telling you at the old house. That's the barn. That's the barn taken off the mountain from the old house. And the back part of that barn was wood. It, it fell down when way before Tina and I come along. But the rock part that would be looking at it would be on your left. That was the original barn when we were kids. And, but anyway, back to what I was, was saying, going to say, they, uh, they would have uh, contract buyers that come buy all your calves. And the only thing that ever went to a sale was some guy just had a cow or two or something like that. And and so they would come usually in May or June, and they would contract your calves for so much money. And, and both of you were running a gamble. You know, if the market went up, you were going to lose money because 
you contracted them too cheap. If the market went down, he's going to lose money because he paid too much for them. And they would they would do what they call they would come in and take your calves. Just as an example, they'd say, I'll give you 20 cents a pound for the steers and 18 for the heifers, 2% cut, 3% shrink. That meant that if you had 500 head, they could turn back 2% of them and not take them. They could call 2% of, of your total number. And the shrink was how much they were going to not pay you for that they were going to lose in shipment. And so most sale barns only got what was left over on them contract buyers. Now sale barns, everybody sells through a sale barn, either on video or running mm -hmm. it through a sale barn or something. But back then, when we were little kids, so those contract buyers were usually buying for union stockyards, and and they might be buying for union in L.A. There was union stockyards all over the country. I imagine you all know that. There was union stockyards in L.A., union stockyards in San Antonio, union stockyards in Fort Worth, union stockyards in Oklahoma City, union stockyards in Kansas City, and the biggest one was union stockyards in Chicago. And when they contracted, then they'd tell you what stockyard you were going to send your cattle to. And I remember Uncle Alton saying at one time, Granddad made him ride the train to Chicago with a load of them and he, to get the money. And he was not impressed having to ride that train all the way to Chicago with that load of calves to get the check for him when he got there. Yeah. And they, Neely, they talked yeah. about Taylor. bulls. Go ahead, Chris. Excuse me? Was Mealy Mealy Taylor's the one that lived right? Is that her name, Mealy? Yeah, to be yes, 103 yeah, years old. Her, her, so there's a Amelia paper was actually her name. Yeah. Yeah, she well, made well, the yeah. paper at 100. She made the paper at 100. Oh, yeah, that I was her. That picture where yeah. But she lived to be 103. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I actually somewhere have her obituary, and uh, they said she was just lived because she was so mean. I don't know. I can vaguely remember her, but you know, I was scared of her. I was scared of everybody. If, then. if like, that's the I case, Benny's going to live to be about a hundred twenty. Our mama, I mean, our mama was about like a mad sow hog when she got mad. Is she'd eat everybody out, so it didn't much matter. You better run. And yeah, yeah she, I you know I, I look back was, at, at these kids nowadays, and I'm I, I like. I ain't sure they could live through me and Tina's life. They'd have probably, we'd have got them in trouble and got them killed because we'd done some pretty rough stuff. Right, Tom that, has I a have friend. Cool yard. Life. Go ahead, Chris. Do what? I was going to say that schoolyard picture, the main thing that stands out to me is you can tell who the boys are and you can tell who the girls are. <laughs> yeah, we wasn't woke back then. <laughs> I there have we a go. friend that lives at Benson. His name's Ronnie Graves. And the first time he ever come to the ranch to stay the weekend with me and Tina, he went home. He said he told his mom and dad, I ain't sure I'm tough enough to stay with them kids. <laughs> no telling what we done to Ronnie. I don't remember, but I'm sure we got him hurt somehow. <laughs> Is that Al Terry? Who was that? No, that's no, that is the Hazelwood boys. That's Jerry and uh Okay. That's Lottie Hazel Lottie okay. and John Hazelwood's Jerry and I can't remember the other one's okay. name. Okay. Now who's that? That's their mother that's them boy's mother. That's Lottie Hazelwood. Oh, that's Lottie well, was, or of course by the time I knew her she was old. Yeah. And that that is Gramp and two of his brothers. Whoop. That's the, whole, that picture that's the whole fam damley right there. That that was taken in Fredericksburg. Okay. That picture was. That, that's a ten okay. pie. The guy with No, actually it isn't, but I think it was a print or, of a ten type. The guy with the mustache was Gramps dad. His name was Martin. Lewis Martin McDonald. And his family, his dad came from Scotland over here. His name was Linville. And they landed in Illinois somewhere and he was like a champion prize fighter. And and, and, and back uh, then back then they never told anybody to smile when they take a picture. No. I, I guess not. It took so long. 
anyway, they look um, like a driver's license Grant, picture or mugshot. <laughs> yeah, I think Grant. I'm going William to leave you with Tina for just a second. Kid. I'm going to run and get me something to drink. And if y'all don't mind, I'll let Tina nope. entertain you for a while. All right. Um, she's, she's a lot prettier no, than it you was, are. It was a... Um, that's no, true. Sure. Gosh, put your glasses on. <laughs> we can, we can, we... Uh, no, it, it, was, it, was, it was an experience. We had, a, we had a, you, a unique childhood. To say oh, yeah. Least. You know, we... Well, things have we changed so on. much, and, and like you said, you you didn't even have you had to go to your uncle's or something to watch TV. Yeah, yeah. We and in fact, like when I was in high school, even we had CB radios, and uh, we had a kicker. I don't know if the antenna is still there at the Rock House. It was last time I was there. It had it, is. it fell over, but we had a okay. We had a CB radio with a four hundred watt kicker on it. And Glenn's had oh one, God. and at four o'clock in the morning, we would check in with each other. And if somebody needed a phone call made, you know, for business or something, you would give them the number and tell them what it was. And if somebody was going to Douglas, they made the call for you. Here, we'll watch this again. And, uh... Oh, that's cool. Bring back Where memories. Where did they get that rock? Actually, that, that rock come out of that creek. They that hauled rock. Rock. I to build the rock. I always wanted to build the rock house. Always. I'd love to. Um, yeah, that those guys that built it, um, actually, they worked on it about two and a half years. And the inside of it, when I was little, was all like hardwood paneling and well not paneling actually it natural. was just like cabinet grade wood you know it was and the countertops were solid concrete they poured the countertops yeah, out of I'm concrete <laughs> i'll be dang that in the laugh. kitchen like where the kitchen was that that corner of that house had been struck by lightning three times in my lifetime that i know of and broke that wow. broke that concrete counter the last time I'll be dang. I'll be dang. That was a, a lightning magnet. But, so, in, in, uh, I mean, you didn't have lots of illegals traveling through that country at that time? Not when we were little, no. And all of them that come through could cowboy a little bit, That's... you know, and build fence. And, and that was what they wanted to do. They mm -hmm. wanted to, uh, a job like that. They didn't want to go to town and work in town. They wanted to cowboy or work on a farm or something like that they were pretty low-keyed and they would and, always ask uh, you, know, you know they would ask if maybe. they had food and could they work for some food you know and if if you had work that was great if not well we'd feed them and water them and they'd go about their way you know or you'd tell them mm -hmm. like you know rodeo new mexico's over there or animus new mexico it's that way they have farming you know that's the area you might go to work you know and, and it wasn't a problem and then no. it just that, it was similar know, even then, when i was a kid it was similar i mean we yeah. you know guys yeah. show up and and he's just trying to get through the country he might even stay we had i was raised on a little ranch up there and we had a little bunkhouse out in the back and they'd come in they'd stay maybe work for you know a month or two and and uh, dad would feed them and take care of them and then they'd be on their way somewhere and then, and then you know. they'd go They'd leave, yep. yeah. That's hmm. that's how we were. Yeah. Um, we, right. well, Tom and I was actually the cement mixers usually, but we were always happy when they had one of them. But, you know, Dad decided we needed to build some, you know, pour a floor in a shop or something, and it was like, man, it's really nice to have some help. 
you know, and Tom always got hurt. Every time we went to mix cement, he always got hurt. So he got out of it. Um, I know one time we broke his arm and then one time my cousin hit him in the face with the shovel and split his lip open and all, uh, all and we mixed it by hand. We didn't have a cement mixer. We had a half of a thousand gallon tank cut in half long ways and we'd haul load sand in bobtail trucks and get cement and then we'd shovel, you know, count out your shovels of sand and your cement and we had mortar hose and that's what we did. We mixed the cement and Dad thought he had a cement mixer. It was me, you, and Mom. And he had a cement mixer. Well, but, yeah. Back then, I'm sure there was more time than money, so you did it yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely the money part. Yeah. Yeah. Dad you never done anything the easy way. Ever. It was the hard way. Of course, I think that's the way he grew up. So that's what he's used to was the hard way. And I know one time we was, I don't know, the, the towers are still there. You've probably seen them. If you go on up that creek above where the old house was, there was two windmill towers right there together within 40 foot of one another. That was our well to the house. And Tina and I were little old kids, and Mom and Dad were pulling that well. It ain't very deep, probably 25 foot deep or so. But anyway, there was an old sycamore tree down there in the creek. Had a hive of Spanish bees in it. And they told us not to not to stir them bees up, but that was an invite. We got down there and started throwing rocks at that tree. And we got them bees stirred up, and they got up in that windmill tower and went to stinging mom and dad. And we did have us a sideshow going pretty quick. Of course, it was a different sideshow when they got off that windmill tower, but it was a pretty good sideshow for a little while. Yeah. yeah, they got bee stung, but we dang sure got our rear ends warmed up, too. Man, like, yeah. and our our mom was it was funny she uh she wore these they call them flip flops now but they were not rubber they were like leather with walking heels like uh almost like a shoe heel on them and she could have them off and be beaten on you so fast you didn't even know what you were getting whipped for and she would hit you like ten times and hold on to you and catch your breath and hit you again you know and my dad would only hit you like two or three times, but it'd be so dang hard that, you, you know, you'd wake up next week. Well, he decided <laughs> he was at the sale in Wilcox. That was another deal I was going to reiterate um, about the cattle sales. When I was little, they only had one sale, and that was Tucson. But they started that one in Wilcox. He'd gone to the cattle sale, and he bought a stockyard whip. Oh, and, no. oh, the ideal thing to discipline your child with, you know? And... I don't know. Tom and I had done something. We got in trouble. And he gives us a spanking. It, it didn't even hurt. It stung a little bit. It was like, oh, and I cried and carried on. And Tom cried and carried on like he's killing us, you know. And he gets out of sight. And we're laughing. Ha, ah, it's funny. You know? That don't even hurt. That worked for about, I think, two spankings. And the third one. He gives us a spanking, and Tom didn't realize he could still hear us, and he started laughing. He goes, ah, that old son of a bitch thinks that hurts. Oh, no. Boy, from then on, it was like a rope or something. <laughs> it, it definitely changed the dynamics. <laughs> it's like, man, we should have been more careful. <laughs> Benny, Chris, take over for a minute. <laughs> Yeah. No, it was it was different growing up out there. You know, kids always ask me, well, what'd y'all do? How, how'd y'all keep from getting bored? I'm, you didn't ever tell dad you were bored because if you would talk to him that, you'd be unbored real quick. And there, there was a big old pen there at the, at the house. and It's a wire pen. And I come in from school, and I guess I'd probably been in trouble on him. He told me go out there and dig a post hole between every post in that pen. And I don't know, it probably took me three weeks to do it because it's a big old pen. I got through, I'd, I'd dig a post hole with a crowbar and a coffee can, and I'd put me a board over it so it wouldn't get filled back up. I got them all dug. And I said, what post do you want me to put in those holes, Dad? And he said, oh, you can go out there and fill them up. I just wanted you to have something to do to keep you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. The water was fresh, wasn't it? 
Pardon? I think that I think that pin is that all that wire is still there. I think it's V mesh. It probably it? is. Yeah, yes, it yeah. was. It was V mesh wire. It was V mesh yeah. wire, and there was a big old round cement water trough in the pin next to it, and it's probably still there yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and that load and shoot, I don't know if it's still there or not, but but all uh, I actually should have sent a picture of that he when I was before I went to school. My mom, when Tom started school, they rented a house in town and and she stayed in town with him. And in the second year, she hauled him back and forth every day. But the screw worms were still real bad. So I rode. I mean, we worked a horseback. We left the house at daylight every morning and we rode all day. And keep in mind, I'm like three or four years old. And um, in the afternoons, he worked on those corrals and he would go up there like in the edge of the forest and cut those oak posts and by himself and load them in a old bobtail truck and haul them back down there and dig the post holes. And he built all those posts and the way he did them was, you know, he set, he'd set two posts side by side and stack those oak logs in between them. And those corrals were there for what, 30 years, Tom? Oh, yeah, at least I don't know. You know, I can't remember if they were still there when last time I was there or not. But if they aren't, it's because they tore them down. It wasn't because they fell down. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but, uh, so they went to build that. Uh, and, uh, where you guys had your house and then back behind it up there closer to the mountain, that big old V mesh pin. And that's where John that was Clark the arena said, that him right? and I. That was, yeah, yeah, that was that's, the arena. Yeah, that's what he said. That was the arena that a, Tom and I and the the boy from Mexico built. And okay, I think yeah. there's there's a little what there's twelve a wire, maybe. There's a rock wire alley right there too, and you can see it's got the the wood going from post to post still over it, but. It's all grown up with mesquites and stuff. You couldn't get through it without really overhauling it. But there's all of that stuff. There's really, that stuff still there. Yeah. It it looked yeah, like they're, they're, in those in that video, the brush had grown up real bad. It looked like, um, you know, compared to to what it was, but you know, like up and down that creek when we were kids, it was it was pretty clear. Uh, you know, it, there was some brush, but not. It didn't look like it does now. I don't think. And I know the pear yeah. wasn't as bad as it. Last time I was out there, the pear is horrible. But but uh, you said Walmart bought that ranch. You, they, Walmart part of the Walmart bunch. Walmart's over there. I guess Walmart's all around Bill McDonald, except for over in the New Mexico side um they're back over there to the south and uh isn't that right brett because that's where uh what's john's cousin's name what's mcdonald's Walmart? no john oh. john got a Clump. cousin john clumps yeah, yeah. He's, he's Matt Clump's half brother he's over there he's over there on the new mexico side right he's on that okw ranch no, he's yeah. in Arizona. Uh, Wyatt. Wyatt is his name. And oh, okay. You're thinking. Okay, what? Uh, what? You're thinking about Levi. Levi Clump is in New Yeah. His son. <laughs> yeah. We'll what, see all of that country. Can... Now, now, uh, uh, heir to Anheuser Busch owns all of that country over there, from Bill McDonald's forest all the way to Hatchita, New Mexico, virtually, belongs to uh, the Hadley family. They call it the Animus Foundation, but Drummond was an heir to Anheuser-Busch. And when he come into that country, he bought a place up Warlupe Canyon there, if you know where it is. Right at the end of Warlupe was a place that belonged to some people named Johnson. Uh, 
and he bought it, he wanted to come to Arizona and ranch, knew nothing about it, but he had the money and he bought that place. And then he bought, when Bill and Cordy Cowan sold out, when Bill got sick, he bought them and he bought that old uh, place of, of Ace Robertson's. Who else did they buy? They built, bought the gray. They bought uh, the hat. Uh, I guess Upshaws. Dick Richards' place. Yeah, they got a lot of country over there, but they're the ones that. But I knew Wal uh, heir to Walmart had bought some of that country. I think they bought the Bar M. Someone said, and and uh, Lazy J's, which would be. Not not Anderson Bill Place. McDonald's, the next place toward Douglas. After you leave Bill McDonald's, you go into the Lazy J's. And when you leave the Lazy J's, you go into Warner's, Warner Glenn's place. It would be between Bill McDonald and Warner was the Lazy okay. J's. And then I guess Johnny and them bought that old Rocker M. Or they leased yeah. it or something. Oh, they bought yeah, it. Yeah, see, I worked. I found out about your old place was when they were they bought the rocker m and uh then they get to stick around all the country and and they found out that taylor place was getting ready to be lost over back taxes that guy was just gonna leave it and not worry about it and so john made some kind of a deal with him that was oh, not okay. maxwell well, right I'm... that he bought it from yeah yeah, the, I mean, that's the last one I know of that had it was Monk. And I worked at the Rocker M when I first got out of high school. Dad made me go get a real job. And I worked at the Rocker <laughs> M there. It belonged to, at that time, a guy by the name of Sam DeMiro. He was an electronics man out of Chicago. He made a lot of electronic stuff for the military. And... I went to work for him down there on that rocker M. Not that dad didn't have work for me. He just thought that I needed to have a real job where I got a real paycheck, I guess. And he made me go to work. That's where I went to work was for, for DeMiro. Well, I guess the, the guy that had it before John, they didn't get along with the Border Patrol or something, and there had been an incident, and so in order to uh, go away peacefully, I guess, they left, and then John, John ended up buying it after that. Well, yeah, last I think, time I, I was there... Go ahead, Tina. Last time I was actually there at that old house, last time I was there actually at the house... <clears throat> Um, gosh, I can't remember how many years ago it was. They had that border patrol camp set up there, and uh, man, it was oh like yeah, a they must have had they must have had fifteen travel trailers sitting out there in front of that house. The border patrol was staying in, and they were keeping their horses in the pens there. And I'd have hated to bend their horses because they didn't ride them, but they'd put them in a gooseneck trailer, run up and down that rough road about sixty miles an hour, beating them poor old horses to death. And but yeah, and I, I don't know. I guess money or something. They just folded it up one day, and maybe water. I don't know because they probably didn't have water there once, once everybody left. Uh, it because the well was was uh, at least when we were there, it had a submersible pump in it, but that generator had yeah. to run to to run that submersible. So. So I don't know. I'm going to leave it's, it to you guys for just a minute. Oh, I need to go. I got a, I got a deal on my stove. I smell it. I need to go turn it off. I'll be right back. <laughs> don't, don't burn the house down. I don't want to burn the no, house down. No, don't even burn that up. There's a house right within about 100 yards of us burn up yesterday. They, it burnt to the ground. But go ahead. No. Uh, you. Tom, do you still run cattle, or do you have anything to do with the ranching industry or cow industry? I'm a big cow man. I got two heifers and a Wagyu cow. <laughs> I'm going to have to hire you a cowboy pretty soon. I'm getting too old to tend to. Oh, I'd love to. But, you know, it's 
it's pretty cost prohibitive to get in the cow in the ranching business now. If you if you don't already have it, you can't ever make it work hardly. It's it's. Uh, Dad started hunting a place down here, and I had a friend that was uh, he was with the PCA, and he called me one day and he says, "I need to tell, get a hold of your dad." Says we got a place at Tilden, we're gonna uh, foreclose on. Says pretty good little outfit. Said it'll run about 125 cows. And I said, well, Walt, I said, what kind of money are you talking about? He said, oh, I said, I think he could get it for 3500 a cow unit. Mm -hmm. I said, he can't pay for it with a cow at 3500 a cow unit. He said, well, I know that. I said, well, if you knew that, why would you loan the other guy the money on it? You wouldn't be foreclosing on it if you hadn't loaned the money on it. You know, it's just – and right here where we are now – and. And where Tina is 20 years ago was pretty reasonable and really good ranch country. I mean, it's it's the kind of country that you don't drought out very often. And it's easy country on cattle and everything. And it wasn't too expensive. But then they hit that Eagleford shell down there. And now you couldn't buy a city block for less than a million dollars. And that's out in the country. And here where I am, this is the recreational part of Texas. They'll, I mean, fifteen or twenty acres with a with a camp house on it's worth a million. Where where so are you located at? Do you know where Uvalde is? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm north of Uvalde up here in what they call the river region. I live right at the headwaters of the Nueces River. If when Lonesome Dove, when they were crossing the river, they were crossing the Nueces. That's the river I live on. It's just two blocks from where I live down to the river mm -hmm. and but it's a lot of tourists come in here they come in and buy these places these rich people out of Houston and Dallas Austin and some of them my son works on a ranch belongs to a guy out of Miami he mm -hmm. lives in Miami and they they pay prices for them you could I mean they're they got the money to they're uh, just to play with for them you know it, but you can't do it. Tina's the last one that can. She got they got that place down there worth the money, and and that was one of the last ones that could have been bought worth the money. Is the one Tina's on. It's ridiculous yeah, now. It's, it's, it's small, but uh, it's really crazy because I can run, I can run near as many cows on two hundred and seventy five acres as we could run on five sections out there, you know We're, and. Where are you at, Tina? My horses ain't worth a crap. I am between, if you look at a map of Texas and find San Antonio and Corpus Christi, I'm like halfway in between the two. I'm, I'm not on the coastal plain, but I'm right on the edge of the coastal plain. And um, we, we do have dry, you know, dry spells once in a while, but we have like huge mesquites. So you have... A mesquite bean crop generally when it's real dry, mm -hmm. you know, and a, a lot of us, you can feed a little bit of protein and get by. And uh, my horses ain't worth a crap because the pastures aren't big enough. My, I can go out and holler at my cows and they'll come to me, you know. Haven't owned a decent horse since I've been here. But uh, I, I watched that deal of you guys riding out there and oh my gosh, it made me so homesick. Man, I got a whole pasture full of horses needs that kind of job. There was no video of me doing my acrobatics, though. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you can do some out there. Uh, yeah. Anybody that ever rode much country. has done a few of their acrobatics. Oh, yeah. yeah for sure. You know, it's. Uh, 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 in this country here, well. you, you couldn't take horses from here out there and just go ride. You know, even if they're shod, they oh, just no. couldn't get around in those they, rocks. They can't get around in the rocks. I, I, when I first come to Texas, I went to work on a ranch down there close to where Tina is. Really good ranch. Pretty good size outfit. Run about 2,200 mother cows. Belonged to uh, Cameron Ironworks, which is, is the company at the time. Well, the man that owned it invented the blowout preventer for oil wells. Held the patent on them till for I don't know how many years was the only company that built them so he had a lot of money and uh, anyway 
if, if you wanted rocks, you had to import them. There wasn't any. <laughs> and I always had rocks to throw at something. And I had a gray horse that you couldn't catch. And my deal was I'd get me a pile of rocks when I had one of them like that. And I'd rock him till he come to me. It took me six <laughs> months to get enough rocks to rock my gray horse. Cause <laughs> I, I piled up rocks for, for six months just to have enough to break him and that running off. <laughs> That's how it is here, you know. Kelly told me that that, that they ride some saddles that you built. Do you do you build saddles just for fun, or do you do it full time? Oh no, I made my living. I made my living building saddles for nearly thirty years. Okay, that's the that front did. camera, right? I know you one you built. Can you see that one? Ah, uh, you're not quite focused on it. Down. We see the cow skull, skull that, or the steer right. skull. Uh, uh, Kelly's got one that I built. I guess she's still, last time I talked to her, she was still riding it. Um, yeah, that's what she told me. You can't see it, Tina. It's too dark in there. It's kind of dark. What is it, that saddle of quarters? Yeah. 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 Anyway, but yeah, I still build a few. I kind of, I got arthritis pretty bad in my hands, so I don't do as many as I used to. I used to, that's all I did. I never built belts. You know, most saddle shops build belts and trinkets, and I never did that. I built saddles. That was it. But I averaged at one time, I was averaging about a saddle a day, and I had the orders to keep up. I mean, I was always behind. And I built a lot of trophy saddles, and we get a bunch of trophy saddles to build and I'd sometimes have to finish them at the roping or something because I was that far behind. I finished 24 of them at a at a Bud Light Finals in Dallas one time. They'd have the roping and give two saddles away and I'd be the, putting the last conchos in them when they come to get them. <laughs> it, was, it was a wreck. I mean, it was a mess, but we got them all built. But yeah, I built both custom saddles in a, what we called a trophy line. Trophy line, you didn't get much choice on them. But the custom mm -hmm. saddles, I'd build them however you wanted them. And I built a lot of saddles. I want a, I want a Bud Light kind of, saddle. But it was a did USTR, you wear that? It was a USTRC. I won oh. it in, uh, I think I won it in Amarillo. It was a well, you know that talking about USTRC, and this has nothing to do with what we this whole thing was about. But I, a guy by the name of Denny Gentry, started that USTRC deal. I I know Denny very well. Well, he come to me and wanted me to build the saddles, and told me told me I could build them, and then decided backed out on me because I wouldn't buy a big ad in his paper in his uh, Super Looper magazine. Super yeah. Looper magazine. Yeah. Hey, I got and, my uh, picture on the cover uh, of the Super Looper one time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. No, I knew Danny real but well when they first started the USTRC. I mean, when he came around, he had some guys in this area that helped him and everything, and and uh, he really created a monster. Yeah, and then Bob Burris started that one. What was it called? I can't uh, remember. Uh, America, uh, I don't know. Well, Denny's know got something to do with his. Doesn't Denny have something? This is off the whole subject. But doesn't Denny have something to do with this World Series of Team Roping? Yeah, well, he sold the U.S. If I remember correctly, he sold the USTRC. Yeah, he sold it to Echo Brand. Yeah. But he sold he, it to Echo Brand. And there were so many years, I think, there was a no-compete clause or something. And then... That's when the World Series started. Of course, it's taken over everything. I mean, there's so much big yeah. money in it and everything. I can't believe what these guys are winning nowadays. Oh, no, I can't either. That friend of mine at Benson, Ronnie Graves, won $230,000 last year at the World Series of Team Roping. He was laughing. He said, when we were kids, we thought when a couple of hundred, we'd struck the big times. <laughs> I know. I I went out there, I mean, years ago. And I'd already quit roping for a while, and uh, I went out there. I had a guy ask me, and I borrowed a horse, went out there, and and it, I won 6000 bucks. And 
I told everybody, I said, it's the only place you can go and win $6,000 and leave and feel like you're a loser because you watched all those other people <laughs> win $100,000, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 You know, it's it's like when when we were growing up, if you could have won a rope and paid $6,000, you'd have been sitting going down the road oh. thinking world championship next. That's I ain't but $3,000 away. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have been yeah. at the Blue Moon Bar buying rounds for the house. <laughs> that's the truth (laughs) yeah well back on the subject of of growing up out there though no you know kelly and them they i know you knew that they lived at that old slaughter place for years they did not live up there where warner lives now and uh i can't remember exactly (laughs) what year they moved there they moved there after we were in school or about the time we started school they moved they they leased part of that from benny williams i think and then marvin and warner bought that malpai ranch now i could be mistaken about this but i think that's right and uh they moved there i would say i was probably seven maybe years old when they moved there and they they lived at the slaughter nobody lived at the slaughter when we were sure enough little kids that that i know of and but yeah they marvin and granddad they hunted lions together all, i guess all of our life marvin had come over there and, and hunt lions with granddad and and, and stay and usually dogs. stay warner and warner would stay with us too back then he would come over there and they would stay at the house with us while they were hunting in those mountains. And then when they caught their lion, they'd go back to Rucker. But yeah. No, did you ever know Benny Snoor? I actually had uh... I know I know some Snoors. I, I know that uh Bill Snoor and and uh his brother. That's that's Benny. Oh, okay, the boys, the, the boys are the older ones. That's Benny's grandkids. Now, Benny has a boy named Bill. He lives in Amarillo. And then he had another boy got killed in a helicopter crash gathering mm-hmm. cattle up there. And that is Rick. And that's the dad to those boys. That's the dad to those boys. Yep, to I remember Bill and that. Clay. Bill and Clay. Yeah. I, I they, know Bill and Clay so- just from roping. Yeah, that they were some of the older bunch there. They were there for I don't know how many years. They they were the, there, I guess, the majority of the years that my great granddad and them were there. Because uh, Ben's dad had a homestead over there at Apache, right there at Apache. And that's who mom and dad sold the ranch to originally. When they sold it, was Benny. He bought it, and then whenever Rick got killed, they sold it, and I don't know who bought it. I've I've been told, but I've never actually confirmed it. I was told the guy that bought it, bought it and then couldn't afford to stock it. But I don't know that that's true, because I don't know who, I couldn't tell you who bought it, so I might be lying. But when they but, sold that ranch, they kept 80 acres in that rock house to begin with and sold the leases and the deeded land other than that. So they lived there quite a few years after they actually sold the main part of that ranch. Um, I'm I'm trying to think what year they sold. I think they actually sold that the main part of that ranch in about 80 or 81 to Benny. And 80, 1980, we sold it to Benny. Yeah. They, and uh, they kept that 40 acres there in the rock house. 80. They were going to retire. 80. That was the plan. Huh? Do it what, Tina? Acres. It was 80 acres. Oh, 80 acres. acres. Okay. okay. Anyway, they kept that. They were going to retire, and all they wanted that for was some place to run a few horses and 
and that didn't last very long. Mom got to wanting cows again, so she went and leased a place up there by between Bisbee and Douglas and bought a bunch of cows. And then Dad, they bought a place at Roswell. Tina was on it for a while, big old ranch at Roswell. And they got, I don't think Dad, Dad was never really impressed with it, and they got a chance to sell it. And then he bought a place well, down there close to where Tina is. Yeah, and he bought a place down there close to where Tina is. Now there's a good ranch. Too bad he didn't hang on to it, but he didn't. He sold it. Well, it was a part. It was and a then, partnership deal. Yeah, it was a partner deal, and the partner deals don't work out sometimes, you know. And uh, mom actually bought the one Tina's on. Dad didn't. Mom bought it. Um, she was wanting somewhere to put some cows and not have to lease country. And my wife had a cousin that owned that place, and they were getting in financial straits over income tax or something. And that place come up for sale worth the money, and they bought it. And But, no, I miss it out there. So I never miss Douglas. Douglas is kind of like hemorrhoids. It's something you really don't miss, <laughs> you know. But I, I do, I do miss the ranch sometimes. We moved back out I, there. I what year did we move back out there? And we moved back out there, uh, and I don't remember what year 90, it was. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight or eighty-nine. So we moved back to the ranch, and my wife's. My wife, I'd make her go to town. I think I made it six months, never seen the lights of city limits. I stayed at the ranch all the time. She she didn't think that was too fair. I made her do all of the going to town. But I hate Douglas. That is one. If As the old saying goes, if I own Douglas in hell, way, I'd live in hell and rent out Douglas. Because, it, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't always that bad. Growing up, either that or we just didn't realize it's that bad. I don't know which maybe, it was. Maybe it's more but, I don't know. But it, it, the last time I was out there, it's horrible. I mean, it's just <laughs> – and everybody that I know that, that grew up out there will say the same thing. I talked to a girl the other night. Tina had her call me, wanted me to make something for her, and she was talking about it too. She said, I don't miss it. I don't miss Douglas. And it's like, no, I don't either. It's just a rent, and it's got to where there's nothing there. Well, it was that way always. When you went to town to get something for the ranch, you had to order it. You couldn't buy a bottle of black leg vaccine. Somebody would have to order it. You know, and it's like, gee, many Christmas. Tina was a little old kid, and we were, there was a store there called Newberries. And they had a <laughs> kind of a soda fountain in there and dad was always raising cane about going to town needing something for the ranch and they'd have to order it tina and my little cousin went up there to get them some hot dogs and the ladies they wanted two hot dogs the lady said we only have one tina being the smart aleck she is she says well could you order another one in and have it here next wednesday <laughs> next time <we're> <laughs> That lady didn't think that was too funny, <laughs> but yeah, it's no, so it's short, you know, but... and of course there's it, back then there was no electricity. It caught, we had to buy propane a thousand gallons at a time. You couldn't buy it less than a thousand gallons. They wouldn't it deliver of, it. It come out of Wilcox. Yeah, it come out of Wilcox, Wilcox. and 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 that generator. We had a thousand gallon diesel tank on that generator, and that was costly, cost of propane and tearing up a vehicle. That old road, you know, about two years of driving up and down that road, and the pickups just wore smooth out, and it just cost so much to wrench out there. I admire people that keep, just keep doing it, but it costs a lot to do it. It's not cheap. You know, it's, it's pretty expensive. Pretty cost prohibitive to ranch out there. Oh, I bet. I bet. You know, it's, it's every time you pulled a load of cattle to town in a trailer, you could count on two tires. You was gonna tear up at least two. You know, it, it just it was just, and it got tight. Yeah, and 
Well, it's like I told you what that half of that I inherited when my uncle died. Tina was going to inherit mom and dad's half, and I was going to inherit Alton's. Well, Alton married an old girl, and she took us to court and drug us through court for five years and wound up costing mom and dad and my grandmother close to a half a million dollars. Wow. And I let mom and dad, huh? And was, I let mom and dad very have close to five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and I let mom and dad have my half basically for being able to hang on to it, and they still, you know, it that made money tight, and they got a chance to sell it, and I can't say I blame them. They were, it was partly the drug deals was getting so bad. It was bad there where Warner and Wendy are, but it's way worse up there in them mountains. We were. We were out there one weekend, or Peggy, my wife and I, and we were in that upstairs bedroom, and I got up go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and there was a guy coming off that ridge behind that barn there at that rock house, riding a horse and leading four pack horses. And I woke mom up, and I said, there's an idiot out. This is one o'clock in the morning, pretty moonlit night. I said, there's an idiot up there behind the barn on that ridge riding a horse, leading a bunch of pack horses. And she said, oh, that's those drug smugglers. Said there's a car waiting for him at the cemetery. Mm. And I stepped out there on that balcony on that upper story, <laughs> and sure enough, I'd see lights start flashing down there at the cemetery. And you didn't turn them in because that's the only houses they went by. <laughs> if they got caught, they knew who did it, you know. And it was a dangerous place to live. It really was. And mom would stay there by herself a lot. And well, when I we, worried. When we were there that first time, Benny, it was that first night. You, I mean, all of a sudden there was like automatic gunfire. Pop, 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 pop. Like that. Wasn't there, Benny? Yeah, yeah there was gunfire. We had. Uh, on the mount, they were on the hillside up above the the house where we were, over that way shooting too. Uh, I woke up, I don't know, maybe it was around three o'clock in the morning, and I swear somebody was in the yard and capped one off, touched one off. I don't know if they yeah. were trying to get us to leave or what, but you know, I just made sure that John John was between the door and me. And I got my pistol up <laughs> underneath my head, and I thought, well, if something happens, John better stay down. <laughs> I was outside. Right. Well, I know that, that Tina and I have a cousin that married a girl that they bought that old Lazy J. And Freddie was down there, and he went to check a water one day over there at a tank on War Loopy, and he was on a four-wheeler and he come up on that tank dump and some of them come up from behind that tank dump started shooting at him and he wasn't doing anything freddie said i didn't know a four-wheeler could run that fast he didn't stay around to see what it was or nothing but you know it's it's mom stayed there a lot by herself dad was down here with this ranch all the time and everything and and i worried about her a lot and of course it even if you could get a hold of the law, anybody that realizes it, it wouldn't matter. The law's an hour from getting there at the very best. So you're on your own out there. That's, I mean, that's a fact. You're on your own. And there was trails yeah. and and foot tracks people, and people trash. and trash backpacks, trash. Uh, trash all over that country. That's what, that's what Warner told yeah, me. I was out there and. and and we went to visit Warner and, and Wendy. That's before Wendy died. And that's what Warner said. He said, you can't believe said There's camps all in them mountains where they've been camped. Those drug cartel guys have camped out and had lookouts up in those. And, of course, if you ever got up there in that saddle on, on uh, Outlaw Mountain where the road is, you can see for 40 miles out across there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way to get there without being seen, you know, and I guess they just camp in them mountains because they can see forever. And But, yeah, that's what Warner told me. He said, Tom, you wouldn't believe the stuff that they have up there in them mountains in that forest right now. 
that it's horrible. I believe and, what we see I had we talked to Kelly. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. That, I had talked to Kelly. That That's when we took my mom's ashes out there. And uh, she said, you know, when they're hunting stuff, they know they're there. And, you know, you see them and said, you just, you just ignore them, you know, and hope they ignore you. <laughs> Man, well, they don't want no more <laughs> trouble than you want, you know. And they no. don't want to be seen. That's what I tell a lot of I tell a lot of people that if they're coming over for work. They don't, especially that close to the border. They don't want no trouble that early. So if, I think if they can get away with it, and you don't see them or you wave and keep going, they're fine with it. So. Yeah, well, but you know, if, if human if, smugglers if you, that are there. You know, if if you were to there. actually, you work. may not have done it, you know, but but a lot of us believe that's what got Phil Prince killed, you know, not necessarily yeah. that, Rob, or Rob I mean, Rob, not necessarily that Rob did it, but they thought Rob did it because some of them got caught, so he paid the price. Tell us the you story. Know, it's, it's, tell but, tell us the story. What happened? What I I remember hearing bits. Well. From what I understand, of course, we that old ranch of ours joined Crinches in one spot back there, and we all went to school together. Tina and I and Phil and Rob, we all rodeoed together when we were kids. And I guess, Phil, they had that place leased that, that Benny had, that old Thomason place. And Rob that. evidently... Huh? Do what, Tina? I guess Rob... Sewer. Yeah, yeah, the Snur. I guess well, Fairchild Snur, Thomason, it's all the same place. Anyway, from what I understand, Rob was going up there in what they call a deep pocket to check the well. But he was supposed to meet Phil somewhere down there in the flat at a set of pins that afternoon. They were gonna check on some cattle or work some cattle or something. Well he didn't show up. And Phil started trying to find him, couldn't find him, and, and, and they called in the law. Stuff. And the law come in there with helicopter and everything, and they finally found him, and he was shot. And Warner, I think, may have tracked the guy that shot him, but they, they got back into Mexico on him. And I've had, honest to goodness, and, and I'm not kidding, I've had five either friends or close acquaintances killed by them and people don't don't understand why i don't really like them uh rob krentz got killed by them there was a man and a woman at rodeo new mexico when tina and i were in high school that they two of them killed and then yeah. my and my wife's best friend down here that i've known since i was in high school and her parents both of them got killed by one of them and so it's just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth about them yeah, you know because it, all of them all of them were useless killings when they killed neil and barbara this one down here he come in in one of them cold northers and neil let him stay there the night well neil had one working for him and he always had an old 22 magnum rifle that that one worked for him carried on the ranch to shoot hogs because the hogs are horrible down here well that one he let spend the night got a hold of that rifle and the next morning uh neil went out there to talk to him and as soon as he walked in the door that one shot him and killed him and barbara heard the shot and she run out the out of their house to the barn and he was waiting on her and shot her but didn't kill her and stabbed her 19 more times and killed her, and then they took the jeep and hauled them way back to the back of the pasture and dumped them in a canyon. Hmm. And it was a useless killing. I mean, there was no reason to do it. They didn't. They didn't rob them. They didn't do anything. He just killed them. Hmm. And kind of the same thing with Rob. I, they said that Rob had told Phil when he was going to check the water that he's seen a one down there in the flat and he thought he may have something wrong with him he's going to check on him on the way back and see if he needed help or something and next thing you know rob's dead and it's just i'm sorry i mean it's just in this invasion we got going now there's going to be a lot more of that crap 
you know. But that ain't talking about the ranch. That's just talking about life in general. But that's the one thing though but, that we noticed while we were down there is that the traffic coming through there, unbelievable. I mean, just oh yeah. there, the paths that are made. You know, you you don't. I mean, it takes a lot, a lot of trust. people to beat out a path like that, and there is paths yeah. everywhere. I mean, beat out. Yeah, I it's mean, human trail. Yes, they're human. And, well, and you see trail. the tracks <clears throat> and cars. When uh, Tina and I were growing up, you might not see two cars a week go down that road up there where we were. And then last time I was out there, there was traffic all time on it. It was just and people. That, I mean. That's one of them places you had to have a reason to be going there. You didn't just happen to be going somewhere and drive by it. Well, and you then, know, they, of course, with the wall, the way it's built, it's created a funnel right through those mountains. I mean, it's... it's yes, yeah, it they, has. They quit That's before they got there. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, and it's so remote, they can't really do much with it. You know, it, it's not user-friendly, as they like to no. say nowadays. It's It's... It, there's only one way to handle that's horseback. You can't handle it any other way but horseback. And it's they pretty well got themselves in the spot out there where that they can do whatever they want to, you know. And it's and they've taken over from what Warner said. It just it's I've got a daughter who has a ranch at Animus, New Mexico. And it's the same way over there. Tina and I had a cousin that had a well service at Animus. And one of his guys was working on a well down there below Animus. And he didn't know anything. I mean, he didn't even suspect anyone was around him. And they snuck up behind him, stuck a gun to the back of his head, and told him he was going to take them to Tucson. Hmm. And he took them to Tucson. <laughs> yeah. I worry about my daughter all the time. You know, she's down there and she it's like, you're in a place. You, you might as well be in Chicago. At times, because, yeah, they're not, as long as nothing happens, they're not going to bother you. But anything happens, then you're going to be the one that they're going to blame if they're if you're the only one they think that knew about it. And, and I, I know Tina worked. Go I ahead. I don't, I don't think that we ever seen any Border Patrol out and about, did we, Benny? Uh, yeah, we did, Brett. Um the last time we were there, I saw two Border Patrol. They were driving regular cars. I just saw their uniforms when they went by. Uh -huh. So they look low key. But um, other than that, in Border Patrol vehicles, the only Border Patrol vehicles we ever saw were up there in the yard and around the house. And now, they got cameras. They got those... Uh, uh cameras all over that country i guess yeah but you yeah, know they just shoot them cameras well sensors well, they got we sensors have a cousin that's, yeah a cousin that's a border patrolman out of douglas and uh i actually talked to her about it about two weeks ago and she said you know it's one of those deals that they can't do anything with them you know they catch mm -hmm. them there's what's the point you know why risk your life to do this just so they turn them loose you know and they so the, now the mor this, morale this is, is bad <laughs> this is what i heard in, in in our country right here i mean we got the river coming up and we're not that far from mexico but they have a uh i guess a route that they use to come through here and they have the border patrol puts up sensors but then what they do is they're paying uh high school kids from town here to go map out the sensors so they have gps's and they go through and they they, they say these kids are making about a thousand bucks to go map out the sensors and mark them and so they can reroute and avoid the sensors they avoid them. so they'll bring you know and these are not necessarily always uh bringing in drugs but it's just uh illegal just, illegals trying to trying to you know get into the states and uh they'll have a car parked somewhere 
And if they can get to that certain point, you know, and they're using GPSs and everything to be able to get through there. Or they might have a runner that comes through and, and he's going through, you know, real fast, mm -hmm. just trying to, to clear the way. Deep it's, boy. it's pretty yeah. high tech. Yeah. When I was at that old Rocker M, they put in those sinkers on the ground. They were buried in the ground. All it's sticking up is a little antenna. Well, it'd pick up nearly anything. They chased cows all the time then. One of them old cows would get close to that sensor. It would go off. Here would come the Border Patrol. And they, they spent half their time chasing cows. But I'm sure they've improved that now. It can tell the difference between a cow and a human, I guess. But, but well, no, they got the it, we've got the same thing here. They've got the cell phone cameras and then the radio cam cameras that send the picture. The minute they get it, it sends the picture. To, yeah. And they've got guys that just, that's all they do is take care of those cameras. So, I mean, they're, yeah. but, you know, a lot of country got, out there. We got, we got the same problem here. I'm 70 miles from Del Rio. And every day we have a runner. And every day they tear up somebody's pasture fence running through it. I mean, they just they run into somebody. They'll, yeah, they killed. I don't know how many. There's been I don't know how many killed right downtown Uvalde running. And they well, they come through ask, here. How and, did you and, guys? Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm not. I, no, I you to ask, ask how, how did they got started get started doing this this uh youtube stuff i mean what <laughs> i i i i was kind of this fascinated so whenever i yeah, what? i don't know i you know i i started making videos a long long time ago before youtube was around it was about the only creative thing i could do and uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> silent films <laughs> and uh then i've I've told the story before but i'll tell it again then i was when i lived up there on the mountains i you know youtube came out and i and i was trying to i was living off grid and uh i was wanting to learn you know <laughs> uh, yeah and i was trying to learn how to do put in a good solar system and different things like that and you could learn all that on youtube and my wife was telling me, because I was, you know, this was, I was completely surrounded by the wilderness. And I mean, it was way out in the middle of nowhere. And I'd always tell her these stories. You know, I had hounds and I was going out all the time. And I'd tell her whatever. And she said, you need to keep a diary. And I'd, I'd, be, I'd buy those books with the dates on them and everything. And I'd write in them for like three days. That's it. I was too lazy to write. But I would carry a camera. And I started saying, well, I'll just video these little trips that I make. And then I started, I seen YouTube and I said, well, I can share those on YouTube. And then I got into editing and different things. It led to different things. And then back a long time ago, Bruce Kennedy interviewed all of Warner Glenn, all these old lion hunters and everything. And I was fascinated with that. And uh, I, I started doing a little bit of that and just messing around. And then me and Chris just started we just started doing it wasn't even live we just get together on a call between all of us me and chris and george lambert and nicholas and some other guys that have some youtube channels and we just get together and talk and uh one time i said hey we can just push this button and go live and that's what we did is we started going live and then I don't know. It's 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 different than what most people do because we're just kind of a free for all and we'll talk about anything. So we're not real particular. We get real complaints every now and then. We're not talking about hounds, but <laughs> we jump around even when we talk gonna... about hounds. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Even even when we talk uh, about hounds and mules, we still jump around. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, it's it. We just want it to be fun, you know. I, I just talk about it. if we talk about undocumented people or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to talk about. I mean, whatever is interesting, whatever interests me. I don't know. That's just well, um, 
on people on come up to me and talk about living off the grid. I say I grew up off the grid. Trust me, it ain't all it's cracked up to me. <laughs> well, like you said, you guys you guys watched TV when you went to your uncle's house. That was a big yeah. Like, well, we actually a had a TV sometime some that we had a TV antenna on top of the mountain, and you could get two channels out of Tucson if the wind wasn't blowing. And every spring, the wind would blow the ta antenna down. Dad wouldn't have let us put it back up because me and tina got too sorry to work and it never get put back up till something was coming on tv that mom wanted to watch and then we'd yeah. go put it up and it'd last for a month or two and it'd be blown down again and so we didn't get to watch much television and it was in black and white you couldn't get color tv and yeah it was and you when they put the tv in they took a portable generator and packed a portable tv all over the top of a mountain out there to find where you could get a signal and it wasn't <laughs> very good at best it was like you know it was it was pretty complicated this, to get television we had this ladder <laughs> wire they called it it was like this copper wire with these little uh standoffs plastic, these little plastic standoffs, the and it our antenna was on top of a mountain by the About old 300 house, yards from and it was over, a, yeah, like a quarter of a mile up there to where the antenna was from where the receiver on the TV was, and uh, the wind would be blowing. If you had to change the antenna, it was like, mm, I don't want to watch TV. Never mind, because I'm not going to climb <laughs> that mountain in the middle of the night to turn the antenna so I can maybe... You know, and you're yelling at him, no, a little more, turn it, no, go back, go back, you know. It's, it was kind of You couldn't even hardly, so. couldn't even hardly get radio out there. I, when they first come out, the first transistor radio I ever seen, somebody give it to mom or dad for Christmas, a little old Philco, it, about, about the size you could put in your pocket. And dad took a piece of wire and wrapped it around the antenna and hooked it to the screen on the kitchen. And that screen would make it pick up a radio station. If you ever unhooked it, all you got was static. It was, it was pretty bad. Ingenuity. Yeah. 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 Well, Ingenuity. guys. Pretty good at MIBR and stuff. You want, got anything else you want to say? Any conclusions? Oh, it don't. I can talk all night. I'm pretty windy. I can tell you a lie or tell you the truth or or somewhere in between. But anytime y'all want to talk or I get a hold of us, heck, I, this is the best job I've had in a week. Right here. <laughs> We've enjoyed it. We, it was it was it was good. Uh, Likewise. That country down there's you know, it's it's still pretty wild. I mean, there's there's it not is. a lot. It's pretty wild. You know, there's people that think they've been to some wild country, but that's about as wild as it gets right there. Yeah. And uh, I, it's, you know, and I guess that's why the criminals like it. You can commit a crime there and nobody will ever know about it. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's you're pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> it's, unless he actually sees you do it he ain't gonna find it and dad used to laugh and say if he ever killed anybody he knew places he could bury a body that no one would ever find it and i'm pretty sure there's places in that country that could happen if you there wanted to up there actually <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, was, no. there was one incident talk, talking about that when i don't know i think i was about 17 years old um up there above the old house, the windmill that sets off kind of in that canyon where you head into Estes Canyon from, that little bridge there, I was going to check water on that forest permit, and I'm riding along there, and I look in the trees. It was like a little clearing there, and I thought, what in the hell am I seeing? And I guess it was somebody, bad breakup or something, there was a, like a dress tied to a tree and it had all these knives stuck in it and all this crap scattered on the ground. I guess somebody, you know, some couple had split up and some guy had went out there and, you know, but it, it was really spooky. I bet. And so when I got back to the house, I told, yeah, I told my mom about it. And she said, you know, we probably ought to call a law. There might be a body around there somewhere. <laughs> you know, anyway, next, I don't know. I, I think had somebody call a sheriff's department and, 
they never come out there or anything. I don't know. Yeah. It was it was a weird deal. I was out there. I was out there roping one day when I was in high school. Just I was just roping a dummy, and this Greyhound bus pulls up. Guy gets out. That's driving. It's full of people, and he says, "Excuse me, young man, but could you tell me how far Highway 80 is under construction?" I said. I didn't know Highway 80 was under construction. He said, I've been driving on it for nearly 40 miles. I said, but you ain't on Highway 80. I'm not. No, I said, you're not on Highway 80. Well, where did I miss it? I said, well, there's only one place you could have missed it, and that was in Douglas. He said, do I have to go back to Douglas? And I said, not if that bus won't get stuck. You can go over the mountain, but I wouldn't advise it. And, uh, I was going to tell you, he was talking about Outlaw Mountain. I guess it's still there. The last time I was over there, the steps in the fireplace to that old Clanton house was still there. I don't know if it still is, but it, it was 25 years ago. Where at? It was still there. Where at? If you, Close if to the you take that road, if, if you take that road that goes by the ranch and you go on through, you go into New Mexico and you go over the foot of Outlaw Mountain in the gap, then you drop down into Clanton Canyon. <clears throat> you cross that canyon all them times. And, and the easiest place for me to tell you is there's only one place that the trees grow up over the road. You're actually in a tunnel of trees. When you go through them trees, you go about, what, teen a half a mile down there, and there's a road turns yeah. to the left. And, and you turn, there's a windmill almost straight across from where that yeah, road turns to the left. The when you turn to the left, go down there about, a quarter of a mile on that road and it dead ends down there where their old house was. I have to go, go down there treasure hunting. That's, that's pretty interesting. There you country. go. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, it was, like, uh, uh, the backside out on uh, mountain. Um, yeah, it like was on that old Pendleton the, place. With yeah. Going over the back, like, like you were going to go to Skelton Canyon, there's a place like a a patch of like geodes. It's just covered. The whole ground is just covered in geodes. Oh yeah, on that wall. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah. We went and picked several up whenever I was a kid. Picked up all we could pick. Yeah, I don't out even remember it. whose bright him. idea that was. I don't. I don't I remember whose Indians. bright idea that was. But it was a bad idea <laughs> because we walked back there and then packed them things back out of there. Probably moms. We, we started with a bunch of them, but we didn't make it out with a bunch of them. You know, they got pretty heavy. It's like, you know, I, I, yeah, think, but, I, I think I can do there with three still, of them. No, there, two. <laughs> there was still a lot of Indians in that country when Grandma and them first went there. And she told a story about a bunch of, of uh, Indians stole some horses down in Mexico. And when she was... I don't know. I can't remember how old she said she was, eight or nine, ten years old, something like that. And those Mexicans caught up with them right down there by where the cemetery is. And she said in 15 minutes, they wasn't a Mexican left alive. She said them Indians slaughtered them Mexicans in no time. Wow. I wonder, were they Geronimo's bunch or... Something like that. Oh, I'm sure they were them Ch Apaches, them Chiricahua Apaches. You know, yeah. she never said that, but I'm sure that's who it was, because <laughs> Gramp or William, our great granddad, he was in that country when they captured Geronimo. He was yeah. he was already in that country, and uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm sure that's who it was. You know, that bunch of them from Geronimo's bunch. But anyway, there well, used to be a lot of Tina and I used to hunt arrowheads all over that country. We had a lot of arrowheads, but you know the state don't like you doing that out there anymore. And mom had, I don't know, a small truckload of matats that she had gathered up out there. And they, a guy stole most of them. But and in that old Stevens place, they found a lot of stuff down there on it. Earrings and arrowheads and, and mom, I guess Tina still has it. She has an Indian shoe. Who has the shoe? I do. 
Oh, I, I thought it, you did. But it wasn't found on that Stevens place. It was found up there in Estes Canyon. Yeah, in that cave. There's a cave up there in Estes that that was an Indian cave where they, according to some of the skull, they cremated their dead in that cave. And the ash is about, I don't know, six inches deep in it. And that shoe was found in that cave. And I've been up there several times. I took some boys from down here wanted to go see it one time. By the time we got to it, they wasn't that interested in it anymore because it was a pretty good walk, and they couldn't ride. None of them could ride a horse, so we walked. And it was a pretty good walk back up there in that canyon. But, yeah, I'd been to it, and there was an oven up there. It was a weird-looking thing. It wasn't far from that cave. It was a rock, and they had hollowed out a bottom spot in it, and then it had a sheet of rock about, I'd say an inch, inch and a half, maybe thick, and then it had another piece on top of that that come up like sideboards, and you could see where they had burnt stuff in it. They said that was an oven, is what we were told it was, where they cooked. They had built a fire in that bottom and cook on the top. And I guess it's pretty wild country back whenever our great granddad and them first went out there. I guess it was, and I guess it's nearly that wild again now. Just a different tribe you're fighting. Yeah. Same scenario, just a different tribe. Yeah. <laughs> better weapon. Yeah, yeah, they say they've weapon. seen them coming across there with backpacks and, and black rifles or automatic rifles coming through there. ARs oh, or I'm whatever. sure. I'm sure. Did you guys actually you know, see any people when you were out there? Seen fresh tracks. Sign of them? Seen. They seen you first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, it, it's pretty wild to think that, that they're that well armed and running loose in the country. But I guess they are, and them drug cartels have all the money in the world. Got they can afford money whatever they Oh, yeah, they can afford whatever they want, you know. Well, and, and, we saw signs of, of the traffic and the human trafficking, too, because we found a couple of camps where there was women's girls' underwear hanging in the trees and, and a lot of girls' clothing and stuff. And, you know, for the most part, gals don't just leave all their undergarments hanging in the brush. No. No. No, you know, and, and it, it's pretty crazy that, that and like like I said, though, it's so remote, they they can't hardly get any kind of handle on it out there. It's even if they, even if they fly it, by the time they can get someone to them, why they have disappeared, because it's not that far back to Mexico from oh, those no. mountains. Well, people think people may think it is, but it's not. You know, if, if you're horseback and got a horse that's fresh and can hit a pretty good lope, you can be back on the border in an hour, and it'll take Easy. anybody an hour to get there. Or better just to get to you. By then, you've done dodged them. You know, and it's it's pretty wild. And down there on that place of Warner and Wendy's, I know you know that, right there where you cross Silver Creek, if you jump off the bridge on the south side, you're in Mexico. They used to haul drugs up that creek all the time. They would come under that bridge out of Mexico and drive right up on Geronimo Trail and haul drugs out of there. And now that one they can access, yeah. but... I, I don't it, know if you guys... Y'all knew about the drug tunnel in Douglas, the big one? I remember hearing you about, hear about it. it? The yeah, the first one. Tina handled the dogs on that. She was working for the sheriff's department at that time. Okay, well, and uh, I worked for the county at the time, and I'd leave it. And, uh, but I'd this truck. There was a guy named uh, Johnny Salcido, and he had a construction company. There in his construction yard was catty cornered across the street. Oh no! You know the drug enforcement agency, and uh, <laughs> I would be going to work, and it was like early, early in the morning, like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, and I would meet one of his dump trucks coming east, loaded, 
And I said something, I think, to my mom and dad and two or three other people about, that's so weird, you know, I'm meeting that dump truck coming out here early in the morning loaded. You know, that's that's really weird because they used to get <laughs> sand out of Silver Creek, but they would come out empty, load, and go back to Douglas. Well, it rocked on about three weeks. And uh, they called, go in there with the found that tunnel and what it was they were hauling that dirt out there and dumping it i was actually meeting that truck every morning you know with what they dug out that night or i don't know they may have done more than one load but anyway a friend of ours said man i tell you what they did more to put douglas on them with that drug tunnel and a chamber of commerce has done in 20 years because everybody <laughs> knew about the drug tunnel yeah i remember hearing about that yep. oh yeah yeah they the stories they uh it was that that drug tunnel was something else, and it? to think that they done it right under the DEA's nose is really that was the main enterprise. Something. You either work for yeah, you could have thrown a rock from their office to where they was digging that tunnel. They're caught running the drugs. That's yeah. all there was to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what Tina said when she worked for the Sheriff's Department. There was two jobs in Douglas after the smelter closed down. You either was running drugs or trying to stop people from running drugs. That was the only two jobs <laughs> left. <laughs> we had a friend there had a used car dealership. His name was John Ray. And I was in his, in his deal there one day. He had a tire sales, too, and I needed a tire and, and pulled in there. And, and we got talking. I said, well, John, I said, is business pretty slow since the smelter closed down? He said, no, it's better than ever. I said, really? He said, oh, yeah. He said, these drug dealers will come buy my car and pay cash for it and said, they'll lose it in a seizure and come and buy another one and pay cash for it. I said, I may sell the same guy five or six cars a month. I said, it's really good. <laughs> Who do we, we lost Tina. Well, yeah, her phone man died. She got to come come back. Maybe it's your night night time. Yeah, it's getting. No, there she is. But yeah, yeah, she I guess so. got back on. Like it only works when it. It what? I said my phone's just like me. It only works when it wants to. Oh yeah, it's a union phone, and it's time for a break. <laughs> no. Well, I right. did enjoy it, guys. Yeah, thank you. That that's and in, a lot of neat stories about that country. That's great. Yep. I got a question. Mm -hmm. When I called him, okay. when I saw your Tom on that other video and you said you could you grew up there and you could, you know, tell all kinds of history and story there. So I called Kelly and I said, Hey, you know this, this Tom and oh yeah, we all rode the bus together. So where did you guys pick up the school bus? Right there at the at the house. Right there at the house. It it come plumb to the house. We but until McGoffins bought that old War Loopy place from my grandparents, they had three kids, four kids, four kids. They wouldn't run a school bus till they had. I think it was six or seven kids out there. And I guess six, because whenever it's me and Tina, Meg, Molly, John, and Matt at first, and then Kelly got big enough to go to school. So then it was us and Kelly, and and it went all the way to the ranch and picked us up and then picked them up on the way. We were first on and last off. We got on in the dark and got off in the dark. And yeah. Kelly was the Kelly and and Cody were the last ones on the bus. They were that was the closest ones to town at that time. They lived at that old slaughter place, and and the bus picked them up at the road. The bus picked McGoffins up at the road, but they come all the way to our house. All we had to do is walk out and get on the bus. Hard, yeah. So, yeah. McGoffins drove what fourteen miles. Yeah, about 14 miles down there to catch the bus every day. Yeah. But, um, it was, it runs smoother than you would think. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I, I can't remember. I don't think Warner and Wendy had built that house there, there in yet. 
when Kelly had graduated, had they? I don't think so. Maybe they, she may have. They may have rode the bus to there by then. I can't remember. But yeah, we rode the school bus. Uh, Kelly was like in, I think, fourth or fifth grade. I think Cody was like in second grade when they moved up there to the Malapai. Yeah, I guess that's right, yeah. because Ramsauer's bought that old place at, at the slaughter place, and Chris Ramsauer yeah. rode the bus, too. So, and yeah. then the Bernal that worked for Lauren. A lot of yeah. stories. Good stuff, guys. <laughs> well, Brett? Yes, sir. I think we, all, we did our three hours again. We hit our three hours. We're giving Joe Rogan a run for his money. I know. There you go. <laughs> you know, well, we, anytime every time y'all want. Oh, yeah. go ahead. We always talk about. Gentlemen, we always I talk appreciate about, it. If you're ever, if you're ever no down problem. in South Texas, you're more than welcome to stop and stay as long as you Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Be careful. We got a, Be careful. We, we got a, those We got extra houses and everything else. Y'all, any of y'all come down this way. You got my phone number. Even if you can't find me, if you can just get somewhere within phone distance, call me and I'll come and get you and lead you down here. But That's yeah, good. it's it's a, perfect. We enjoyed it. Anytime y'all want to call and just BS, you're welcome to call and BS. I'm yes, I'm good at BS, and that's one. I've got a doctor's degree in BS. That may be the only thing I got a degree in, but, um, but yeah, I've enjoyed it. I uh, as soon as soon as we all guys, break we up, really I'll think of a thousand more stories. Yes, sir. Okay. Y'all have a good we'll evening. Back on. Okay. Love to get you back on. Y'all too. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tom. Anytime. All right. I got a, loved it. Thank I got to I got to think a man right now. You know, I I I've, I've been wanting to drive around and do some of these interviews. Well, there was a man, Robert, and I can't pronounce his last name. I just got this in. Eberl, E B E R L E. Yarbro. E B Yarbro. Yarbro. No, not no, not Yarbro. E B. I don't know. E B what? E B E R L E. Eberly. 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 Robert Eberly. He's a houndsman from Ohio. And uh, he sent me a nice letter. And uh, I need to decide where I'm going to go because he sponsored me to be able to go do some sit down interviews with some guys. Wow. So uh, I know I've been wanting to go do talk to Rick Dickerson. I'd like to go up there and, and talk to the Meekums, sit down and talk to them. Also, the uh, they're supposed to be going jaguar hunting to call her a jaguar down there with uh, Cody and, and Tony Rivera. Even if I don't go on the hunt, I'd like to sit down and, and interview Tony. So I, oh, I got to think. Down in Mexico? Yep. yep. Down in not, Mexico? Yeah, not far from you from the way I understand it. Uh, if you ever decide you want to go somewhere like that and want somebody that got some connections, we have a real good friend here that's an international guide. He oh, goes perfect. to Mexico, Africa, all over in Europe. He uh, took my son-in-law last year to Mexico twice and Africa once. Wow. Mexico and made him Africa. a deal he couldn't refuse. Huh? Do what, Tina? What did you he say, went, Tina? They went to Mexico, Turkey, and they went to Africa. Yeah, yeah, they went to Africa. Cody, he, Co he went Co Cody King is in on it, and Cody Cody goes into Mexico fairly often and, and hunts down in there. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to go on the hunt with him, but I sure would like to sit down and talk to, to, to Tony because he's he's caught a lot of jaguars. He's got some good stories. But anyway, I wanted to give Robert a shout-out and uh, – Tell him, man, he's got a bunch of merch coming to him. I'm sending him <laughs> everything I got. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. He wrote a super nice letter. Really great guy. And uh, I can't yeah. wait to, to go do some more of these interviews. What? Well, anytime y'all want to y'all want to come down here, we'll we'll show you some exotics if you want to see them and, and feed you and give you a good. place to stay and and show you all the sights Penny, and tell you some Penny lies. Smiling. You know her lies when we tell them. 
<laughs> Even we'll be like we will be like Joe Biden. We'll be a lie, and you know it's a lie because there's nobody could believe it. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate what were you going to say, Benny? I was going to tell you that I talked to Steve the other day. We were talking. I had to call him and make a report on Hendrix, but uh, he asked me how things were going, and he said uh, he wanted to know, have you been down there to, to video Tony yet? And I said, no. He says, well, tell him to get on with it. I want to see. <laughs> well, he, he matter of fact, he sent me a message just the other day, invited me to go jaguar hunting with him down there. They're doing a study. So uh, I got I got the means. I can go. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I don't know yeah, if I'll go hunting, are. but I want to sit down and, and do a sit-down interview with him. He speaks the Where's King's English pretty good. Where is it at in Mexico? Uh, Where is it in Mexico? Let me see, let me look it up here real quick. I'd tell you, Cutillo. What, uh, let me let me pull it up. Hold on. Saltillo. No. Uh, hmm. Almost. Uh, with Cody. Mont Monterey to go to oh, Tama, yeah, Tama, 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 Tama Lupus, something like T A M A U I L P A S. Tama Lupus. Yeah. Tama I'll tell you a story on Monterey. There is a family here who. Uh, Y'all have heard of Mueller Supply, I'm sure. Yep. Big steel building manufacturing. Oh, yeah. The, 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 their family started that, and they sold it, oh, 25, 30 years ago, and done a no-compete deal. The dad did, but the boys didn't, and they started another company called Sweetwater Steel. And I was, I've got trucks, and I and we were hauling for Sweetwater Steel, and I got up there one morning. David wasn't there. Everybody was acting kind of strange, and I asked Steve, his brother, I said, what's going on? I mean, everybody looked like you had pushed their best friend off a cliff. He said, uh, David went to Mexico hunting, and they kidnapped him. Well, he had, he had gone down there on a hunt that, that one of the steel suppliers had arranged for him on a deer hunt, and there were several people supposed to go on this hunt. Well, they got down there on Sunday, Sunday night, a bunch of guys broke in there and kidnapped them all. <laughs> and they thought they'd done it for the money because the family had a lot of money. And uh, Steve thought they was, he was staying at the office expecting a, a call. Well, it turned out that they wasn't after David. They were after somebody else. Wednesday, they let David go. <laughs> but they kept his pickup, everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that they had roughed him up pretty good while he is down there. It's kind of made me a little leery about going to Mexico hunting. I'm not really that well, eager to go. Cody, you know? Cody goes down there pretty often, and uh, he knows where you can go and where you can't go. Yeah, and because I asked him about he, I asked him about some other place and. He said, no, he said, he said, I don't go in there. And I said, how come? He said, because they'll cut you open there. He said, and I said, who? He said, yeah. the cartel. He said, the cartel runs that. Yeah. You don't want to go in there. So That's the way CG is. CG is, is tied in with the federales down there. He uh, Cody, I think, is supposed to go mule deer hunting at Magdalena this year, which is not far from, well, I don't know where y'all are, but it's not far from Douglas. Magdalena's not. They fly into Magdalena, and then they go west to Magdalena out there somewhere mule deer hunting. And but yeah, it, but this guy, the, the the guy that's a friend of ours is an actual Mexican. His name is Guerrero, but he's he takes guys all over hunting. And and yeah. Cody, our son-in-law, is one of his best friends, and and he'll book one of these big hunts. And then he'll take Cody along, and all Cody has to pay for is the cost of getting there. 
he'll he'll get the hunt paid for for Cody. Cody never has to. I think he went to Africa and killed like seven animals in Africa. And all it cost him was an airplane ticket to Africa. So Cody Cody likes to hunt. He loves to hunt. And he's got some exotics of his own down here. But, yep. but yeah. But y'all are welcome anytime. Guys, Come we sure us. appreciate we'd, it. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Really, Thanks for your I time. Love... Great stories. Yes, sir. Now I can't wait to get down there and look around again after you've told me those stories. So, I know. Yeah. Oh, it was nice visiting with y'all. You yes, might, you might Thank find you. another frying pan. Who knows? I think I'll take my own next time. Oh, well, <laughs> that takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> takes the adventure out Thank of it. You, Tina. Yeah, well, I Thank guarantee you, you might find a coffee. You might find a coffee cup Good because night, my God. mother would make a cup of coffee, and when she got through drinking it, leave the cup wherever the hell she got through with it at. So <laughs> you might find a coffee cup if nothing else. All right, guys. We'll Thank see you next time. Night, guys. Hasta luego. Yes, sir.